Where did I leave off? Right. Clayton McTaggart had just put a bullet in the chest of Bodie Greer. Now, I ain't gonna lie and say this was any great loss to humanity. Bodie was an idiot born and true. And the fact is, he just wasn't the type that would have let any slight go by without answering it in disproportionate response. Had Bodie survived that altercation, there would have likely been further bloodshed. Clayton just skipped ahead to the end of the book. Now, with all that said, allow me to draw your attention to something that went unnoticed by all parties. But you see, right around the time Bodie was oozing the last of his skeeter juice into the dusty street, not too far away at the bend in the river, another bitter root flower poked its way out of the Missoula mud and opened its petals. This one just a little bit more scarlet than the rest. And yeah, while this isn't something a rational man would put too much weight in, I'd say these are not rational times. This is Deadlands. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> Hi, I'm hey. Marshall Cheyenne. Uh, I'm here to walk you through this next part of the story, episode two of the Hellgate Trilogy. Uh, we're going to go real quickly and say hello to everyone on the cast and then get right into the action. So I'm going to start with uh, uh, the seven o'clock on the, on the screen here. Uh, Amadeus, Amy Haddock. Say hello. Introduce yourself. Hello, all. Todd Moonbounce here, at Todd Moonbounce on socials. Uh, I'll be playing Amadeus Amy Haddock. And then kicking up right above that, Bob Morrow. Good day, chat. I am Bizarre Hands. My pronouns are he, him, and I will be playing Bob Morrow. Skipping over to the other side, we got Jameson Jem Freeman. Hey everybody, I'm Candace the Magnificent, playing Jameson Jem Freeman, pronouns she, they. And swinging down to the bottom of the clock, Clayton R. McTaggart. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Howard, the host and founder of Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard, at Howard underscore Ryan Gregg on social media, and I'm the guy who got us into this mess, Clayton R. <laughs> McTaggart. <laughs> <laughs> so, where we last left off after shooting Bodie Greer... Uh, you folks uh, were then spent the night uh, in some sort of bacchanal with a bunch of lumbermen and uh, and sort of woke up dizzy the next morning, kind of dragging yourselves into the Delmonico Hotel uh, and trying to uh, figure out what your next uh, course of action was going to be. You heard tale of uh, the sheriff, Moses, um, was out of town up on Rattlesnake Creek trying to uh, track down some uh, road agents that have been plaguing the uh, the Mullen uh, Access Road. And there was some talk about maybe seeing if you could help them out, but uh, I'm, not gonna ex I'm not going to presume that's everything you pl folks plan to do. So let's take us now back to the Delmonico Hotel. Uh, as you guys are finishing your breakfast, what has the discussion been about your next course of action? Anyone? Well, I uh, suppose it's only fair that I make things right around here, and if I can uh, kill a couple of uh, road agents and uh, my retribution, I guess that uh, plays into my particular set of skills. Anyone else have any ideas? It's all you, uh... Really do, Clay, huh? Just kill people? Seems like it. Well, 
Just uh, just keep me on the other end of that gun, and we'll be good. I uh, wasn't ever any good at singing or dancing, so I guess killing's what I got. Well, I think I, it uh, makes sense to uh, head on up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I need to go visit Mama sooner or later. How about the two local kids give me a common knowledge roll? Use the, we got the we got the uh, the server up and running uh, nice and smooth now. Yeah, so I reached for that. my dice. Yeah. All right, so I see a four from Jim and a seven from Amy. Uh, both of you know that uh, um, the Haddock family farm is west of here, as you can see on the map. Uh, I'm going to ping it right here on the board. And Rattlesnake Creek is rather to the east and north of here. It's this whole dark line heading up into the mountains. Just, you know, just to orient yourself on the uh, on the map there. Uh, I'd have to say that something I need to do, but I'm certainly in no rush. That can uh, make any sense amongst y'all. So, Clayton, if uh, those trigger fingers are inching, well, you can scratch that itch. I'll leave it entirely up to y'all, but hell, if we can go out there and help the sheriff before he gets back here, finds out about all this, might make the blow a little bit softer on us. Uh, Bob, you had ran off in the morning, yes? Uh, yes. We can, and then I'm happy to assume that, that I'm back for breakfast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I spoke with uh, the builder uh, of uh, the bleachers. Uh, I'd probably Bandit. report back. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Um, what, uh, what are you up to this morning, Bob? Can't say I woke up under much shade, but uh, sounds like there's a 20th anniversary coming up for missoula gonna be a band gonna be a show but i also heard that this isn't the original hellgate it's a little bit further further away and uh not sure the people left in in such great circumstances but that's uh that's something you might know more about I'll uh, just kind of think on that, Marshall. Yeah. Huh? What's that? Uh, just what is uh, my my recollection of uh, what Bob's talking about with the towns and everything? You know that Missoula it, uh, came after the town you you lived in. And okay. The, the town that um, the town that you lived in was further up Mullen Road, closer to Frenchtown. Um. Uh, you'd reach your your you reach your family farm before you'd reach Hellgate, the town. Uh, but it's one of the reasons why maybe you're kind of reluctant to head off in that direction in the first place. Is it? Uh, it, it would bring you closer mm -hmm. to the spot. Um, okay. both of you do recall that uh that yeah it was a small little town, maybe only twenty people that lived in town. And uh, there were, everything else was just farms in the va in the valley. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, this place Word is, is uh, that, certainly um, grown up. Word is that uh, that McClellan Ranch is closer to the old Hellgate than uh, than here too, which seems like an awfully good reason to head up river. <laughs> Especially if we can uh, get the sheriff on our side before we have to answer to uh, those McClellans. Jim just kind of purses 
uh, purses his lips and, and kind of looks away and just starts kind of making sure that, you know, he's got everything on him that he needs. Doesn't really want to talk about Hellgate. Right about this time, uh, Annie comes strolling in to the uh, the eatery side of the Delmonico just to check on everybody, make sure they're enjoying their meals. Um, gives uh, Stops by your table and asks, is everything all right this morning? Ma'am, this is a this is a mighty fine egg you've uh, you've prepared here, or your staff, or what it's have you. Thank you very much. It's definitely my staff, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll give your uh, regards to the cook. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Quite a show you put on last night in the street. You worried about any blowback on that? We're uh, we're finna head up there and go talk to the law, maybe uh, make a better impression. Uh, clearly, we uh, tried to give those young men uh, the benefit of the doubt, but cooler heads didn't prevail. And I kind of like look over at Clayton and like nudge him. <laughs> yeah, every time you, fi- I'm sorry. Go on. Oh, just every time you fire a gun, there's a little bit of kickback. You ever met uh, uh, Sheriff uh, Moses? Well, I ain't never been out here. Ah. Uh, well. No sudden moves. She smiles and starts to walk over to the bar. Sounds like a man after my own heart. <laughs> so, uh, you may notice, uh, Jim, uh, that in the uh, journal section, uh, and, uh, the, do I have that turned on? I do not. Where is it? Yeah, you know, in the journal section, there's a little button down at the bottom that says quest log. And if you click that open, you can see that there's two little prog- uh, quests in progress that I put in there. That's the Wooin mm-hmm. of Annie Halstead. Basically, I put those in there just to ha- help us keep track of your uh, complex dramatic task. Uh uh, it is a one-person task, which means nobody else can score a success in this. And this is something that's in Savage Worlds, where you have to collect a certain number of successes in a certain number of tries. Um, no one else can collect these successes for you, but they can po- provide support roles to give you bonuses. Okay. Um, however, we don't have a strict timeline for, uh, like, you only have a certain amount of time to perform these successes. You just don't have a certain number of attempts. You had Got five it. attempts. You've used one. You now have four. In order okay. to get, <laughs> uh, in order to get uh, the outcome of which you prefer, uh, you need to collect eight successes in these five attempts. You've collected two. <laughs> okay. All so, right. Short story is you need you have four more successes to collect another six. Okay. You can use any skill you can think of to try and woo Annie Halstead. However, even the same one over and over again. However, um, after a certain point in time, repetition is not your friend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just wanted to let you know that, that, he, that set up. He is welcome to fly with a wingman or two. Yeah. You know, as yeah. support roles, yes. Jam is uh Jam at the moment is still uh licking his wounds from the embarrassment he suffered the previous night. He thinks heading out on the road is gonna maybe settle that score for him. <laughs> uh you do see uh uh Annie uh, after making sure everything's fine with at your table, she moves over towards uh uh through the the doorway into the saloon half of the of the uh Delmonica, which is the, the little eatery is kind of like has a separate room from the saloon, but there's a big wide open archway that connects the two. So you can kind of like see right into the saloon and the saloon can see into the eatery side. She walks up to the table and she starts up a conversation with somebody who you can't quite see just kind of just out of uh, the doorway. Um, but uh, Morrow, you can give me a notice roll.
Oh my. Get it. That is a 13 hit and raise. Mm. So um, you clearly hear the voice of uh, Morgan Bennett. Um, she's the man I spoke to earlier this yeah. this morning. Yeah, you recognize uh, the it was just a little of the bleacher. Yeah, just like an hour or two ago. So uh, you recognize him. He's uh, you know, it sounds like they're just having a, a pleasant, you know, conversation. Uh, I think I'll uh, subtly point towards him as being the 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 one I was speaking to this morning. He's the one that uh, he suggested there there isn't too much to know about the mayor here, which I find a little bit surprising, but maybe he'll have more to share later. As in, he's not. He really uh... likes to build that man. He likes to build. <laughs> not uh, much worth finding out, or it's got something to hide. Gem and f- Haddock can both give me common knowledge rolls. I see. Amy's uh, memory of his old days is long gone and faded. Jim remembers the Bennett brothers. They were a little bit older than you. All the kids kind of looked up to them because they were like 16 or 17 back. Um, and so they were always a little bit, they were always like right there on the edge between grownups and the, the other kids that ran around um the farms and so they were kind of like the ones that are always like in charge whenever the kids got together to do stuff and uh uh yeah so you recognize the name bennett okay i kind of like look over at them i say hey bob how are you uh how are you acquainted with the bennett's only met him this morning, but uh, he was there when I woke up. <laughs> I mean, he treat, not he the treat same you way you might have like met Annie. Hmm. All right, I think. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we go ahead and hit the road, y'all? We should. Uh, we should get going before uh, before the day gets away from us. What do you say? It's a great day yeah. for hay, and I'd rather be on the trail when it's got light. We're only paid uh, one day at delivery, so it's a good time to leave. Sounds good. Let's get on the road. I, I assume that we haven't seen the major this morning, or and I assume he wasn't. Um, he was with uh, us for breakfast. He was uh, okay. He, he, yeah, he, he came in during breakfast. Yeah. Briefly, uh, then, then he's out, out, parts unknown at the moment. Yeah, uh, you could uh, ask him for directions, but you're not exactly sure that'd be good. <laughs> True. Uh, as you are, uh, you you pay for your, your your for your meal and you gather up your supplies and you head out onto the onto the streets of uh, Missoula and are to head down get your horses out of the the uh, livery do you see um morgan bennett it's out there in the street uh jim are you uh with your quick let's get out of here and hit the road are you attempting to avoid morgan bennett I'm not trying to be sneaky about it because I'm not trying to call attention to myself but I'm trying to just kind of keep it moving so that no one really is staring at me too long. Right. I was talking to Annie and I feel like it would be a mistake to try and bust that up at the moment. Well, apparently it was, you know, he wasn't in there for very long. It looks like he just, he got a, he got some sort of jug filled up there at the saloon and is walking uh, back onto the street. Uh, as you guys come out of the, uh, the eatery half of the Delmonico and um, he turns to look in your, the direction of the Avalia and says, Mr. Morrow. Hello again. 
You got your breakfast in that jug, or did you try some of Annie's eggs? Oh, no, a little incentive for the boys on construction. Smart. Keep them hydrated. Sun's going to be hot today. All right. Um, yeah, he qu quickly looks at the rest of you and says, yeah, have a nice day. Kind of tips his hat. And uh, let's see. Let's give him a notice roll. Sorry. Did I? Uh, okay. Or not. Let's see. That's a four. All right. Um, he, you see him pause as he looks over the uh, the, the group, and he kind of he looks at Jem uh, for a moment, and and Amy. Like he recognizes that you like, he thinks he knows you, but he doesn't say anything. He's just like, "Have a nice day." Walks off. Dude. Uh, can I uh, see if I recognize that expression sure. of recognition? Yeah, yeah. Notice. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Keep going. Very Keep much going. So. Oh, yeah. here we go. Six, 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 one, <laughs> 19 all day. It's a hit in three raises, or uh, or so. Uh, hit, uh, yeah. It's a hit and a raise. Let's put it that. So yes, you definitely recognize uh, a look of recognition in Morgan when he looks at the two of you. And maybe he's vaguely familiar to you now that you've seen him. You, you didn't put, you didn't recognize the name when it was just being thrown out. But when you see mm -hmm. the face, you you recognize that person. Okay. Uh, do you get anything on how or why I recognize him? Uh, you remember playing uh, a roughhousing game two miles south of your family's farm in a place called Council Hill. And he, um, Morgan Bennett, was uh, there. The, it was a, it was a sort of like case of capture the uh, um, king of the hill kind of thing, where a bunch, half the kids were defending the top of the hill, and the other half of the kids were trying to charge the hill. Uh, you had gotten, as one of the younger kids in the group, had gotten pretty badly hurt, and Morgan Bennett kind of like took you in under one arm. And defended you against the uh, uh, against uh, further attacks, while uh, he made sure that you were like uh, not seriously injured. And you remember, you remember that in the flash of a moment, you remember that you have that memory of him. Just kind of let it let it go. I'm not gonna not gonna say anything about it. But... All right. So, you uh, make it down to the end of the street, get your horses out of Hawk, and uh, ride out of Missoula or any stops along the way. Any stops? I don't have any stops. Any y'all? I don't have any. All right. I'm good. Okay. So, uh, you see, actually, uh, right there on the, uh, you see the Bennett Brothers sign. It was like on the other side of the street, which uh, yeah, you guys, uh, when you turned left to come up uh, Missoula's front street and hit the Delmonico, if you had turned right, there's a wagon nearing shop where they, they build uh, wagons and fix wagons and all that sort of stuff. And that appears to be owned and run by the Bennett brothers. Although he doesn't appear to be heading that way. He's heading off to the, the construction site. Now, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Just uh, when we go to pick up our horses, is Lucas actually there, or is there someone else kind of minding the place? Oh, there's definitely Luke. Lucas is there this time. Okay. And so you, you, when you show up, he's like, um, he, he hasn't met you officially yet, so you know he does ask for you know for the did he ask uh, you turn in your horses to Owen, right? 
That's correct. Major? Yeah. Did he give you a paper, perhaps? Uh, kind of think did. on that. Look at uh, Bob. Is, yeah. All right. All right. He, he, he takes a quick look at it and says, all right, sure. Yeah, yeah they're all over here. They're good horses. Uh, uh, you want me to save the stall? You coming back or are you moving on? I think we'll probably be coming back. Anyone else have any uh, any thoughts otherwise? We'll definitely need a place for our steeds. All right. All right. Good to know. Uh, get, he pulls them out. Uh, show you, and you, you need help putting the tack back on or are you, you good? I think right. I'll be good. All right. He gives you your horses and all you know your saddles and bridle and all that sort of stuff. You guys uh, get her all hooked up again. Ride north out of Missoula, uh, looking for uh, Rattlesnake Creek and Sheriff Moses. Along the way, uh, kind of slow up and pull to the back of the group and give a nod to Jim. And uh, just kind of have him join me for a little chat on the trail away from the others. Okay. So I pull back alongside uh, Todd. You saw them, uh, them Bennett brothers? Yeah. But, uh, you were asking about them. Uh, remember them from uh, they- growing up. They were nice enough when we was kids, but I don't, I don't know. I got a weird feeling about this place. It's the first time I've been back in a quite a long time, and I don't know. It just feels a little hinky to me. I absolutely agree with you there. I, I don't feel too good about anything about this town anymore, and it's pretty tough to be back here, but it's... It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Amy. It's nice to have a friend on the trail. Just uh, tip the brim, and it's really uh, all I've got to say. And catch back up. All right. So, uh, as you begin to reconnoiter your way up into the hills here uh, north of Missoula um, it's really easy to find the river um, you just kind of follow the hell gate until you uh, until a big branch of it sticks out to the to the left and then you start following that up uh, but looking for a trail where the sheriff might be is so maybe a bit harder so who will be taking the lead on Everyone else can um, support them. See, is anyone especially skilled in tracking? Which would be survival in Deadlands. I've got survival. I got some survival skills from being out here in the hard country. I don't know if y'all want me to take lead or not, but I can help you out. You always, uh, we're the better of the two of us at uh, hide and seek and whatnot. Happy All to right. follow you, Jim. Before you make that roll, anybody supporting? I'll support. Okay. Okay. Hey, okay. ace in that for those fours. That's an that's a going to be a plus two to Jim's uh, uh, tracking check. Um, and I'm assuming since nobody else jumped at the case, uh, we'll just go with that. Get a plus two on this roll. Ooh. And nice. Ooh. Uh, yes. so that is a We know where we're a, going. You definitely know where you're going. Uh, <laughs> nine plus two, uh, cause I don't, it doesn't look like the, you put the plus in. So that would be a oh, 11, nope. just shy of, um, two raises, but that's all right. Savage worlds. One raise is a raise is a raise. It doesn't really matter. Um, so it's a bit of a 
of, of a trek before you find anything in particular. Um, the the going is pretty rough in spots. It's and it gets mountainous real quick. Um, as you make your way through the brush and the uh, and the, the the wooded areas up here, you get a uh, and as you move further and further away from Missoula, you get more of a feeling of um, being out of the reach of any good or quick help and it does put you all a little bit uh on edge as you do so in order to sort of uh you have there's two different things that a person can do in, in like this they can talk or they can go quiet as a stone which one uh of these are you folk folk are you quieters are you quiet folk or are you talkers Gem is quiet as the grave. Same. Being uh, sounds yeah, like a very company. alert and <laughs> cautiousness right. creeps in. Okay. And so you ride on up the the mountain in silence, hmm. unless Clayton's a, a talker, which I don't suspect that he no. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not this. Clay. <laughs> Clayton's looking at, at things that need shooting. Right. Um, so, as you, mo as you move on, you get you do pick up a signs of some horses that went up went, went through here. Uh, and you kind of follow that. Uh, eventually, it leads away from the, the river and in more into the mountains. And uh, with that, you kind of like get a uh, move away from the uh, from that and uh, things get even well, without uh, without better word, spookier as you uh, as you go off the trail alongside the river and into this uh, more heavily wooded area. You remember the stories of um, the Salish Indian, the Salish native people as they come through here, this was always a dangerous place for them. They would go west to hunt buffalo, but the Blackfoot tribe would guard these woods. And um, it was always a place of ambush. And as you ride through this heavily wooded thicket, uh, you also your mind plays tricks on seeing shadows move behind every distant tree line and bush. Um, even the normal critters seem somehow suspicious as you, as you pass through the woods here. After about two or three hours riding into the, into these hills, you hear a distant crack of a gun. It's answered by a couple more. And you think you may have found your missing sheriff. So do you, how do you choose to veer off and approach that direction? I think I'm... that I'd like to get as close as I can um, and then head out on foot so I don't like make a bunch of noise trying to sneak up to take a look. Okay. You know what we're walking into folks. Uh, nice and easy, nice and quiet. As I pull my rifle around over my, my uh, shoulder and just eyes are scanning left and right uh, constantly. I'll follow up. Make sure the horses are well hid. Yep. Remind everyone that Annie said no quick moves. Right. You get as close as you as you think you can. Um, you kind of you you hear distant voices yelling at each other. Uh, but the echo and the woods—it's a little disorienting. You can't really make out what they're saying. Just 
the general disgruntled, angry tone makes its way to you. And that's about it. You find a place to stash your horses and uh, head up a little bit closer on foot. You find a small, barely used horse trail. And as you follow it a little bit further, you see a ridge of rock where the, where the, um, where the trail kind of rides up and be, uh, into a thick gr- clump of trees and nestled into the trees di- in the dimly lit area shaded by um, in the shade here, the mountains, you can see a small cabin. And off to one side, a shed ringed in bushes and trees. And then off to the right, hunkered down behind the the rock uh, ridge that leads into this area, man in a trench coat um, with a broad shoulders and a barrel chest and a thick uh, um, brushy uh, beard that looks like it's made almost of steel wool. Uh, as you approach, uh, you trying to come up quiet, or are you are you announcing your uh, your location as you do? Can I try to make a bird call with my survival? Sure. Like a little whistle, so that he so that he can like look to us instead of us just being like surprise. Right. Is it, <laughs> right. Is it only the one person we see? The only one individual. You see one man um, wait. You know he's not nowhere near the cabin, but he's like at the at the edge of the of um, the the entrance to the where the cabin is located, kind of mm-hmm. hunkered down below a, a rock uh, a rocky cliff or ridge. It's not very tall, maybe about like six feet at the most, but it's where he's choosing to kind of hunker down. That is a success. Um, the figure sitting there with a you see what appears to be a, a shot, a double barreled shotgun in his hand, turns to look in your general direction and spots you because you're not hiding. Seems concerned. Turns from his back and where he's sitting with his back to the rock wall, turns a little bit clo- uh, toward in your direction, kind of lowers the shotgun in your general direction, but not necessarily pointing it at anybody exactly. And in a hoarse whisper, says, well, what new hell is this? Jem lifts his hands. We, uh, we're visitors come from Asula. Heard you might be in a lick of trouble. Thought we'd aid a hand. I don't recognize you. You say you're from Missoula? Just passing through. Maybe might stay for a while. Young deputy of yours said, uh, might be in some trouble. Ah, well. All right. Give me a persuasion roll. Both? Anyone who wants to try. Uh, okay. Can I aid Jem? You may. Okay. I will aid as well. Or maybe Jem should aid, aid me. <laughs> I think Jem is going to aid uh, Amy. He seems more earnest. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, Amy does incredibly well with a 16. That's before getting any aid from anybody else. Uh, so let's hear your, your pitch there, Amy. Did I have that right, too? That Did the deputy say something about the marshal? He did say mm-hmm. that the, the okay, deputy thought... did say that they, he, was, uh, he wasn't going to do anything until the marshal got back. Okay, we knew he was, he was up gone. Rattlesnake yeah. Creek. Tracking down some road agents. All right. Didn't necessarily say that the, the, the sheriff was in trouble. Right. But. Okay. 
Well, as uh, as my friend here has alluded to, uh, we got wind that uh, you know you were away, and that young deputy of yours was uh, just having a whole fit of trouble back in town, and so my other friends here came in and uh, you know kind of helped out, and uh, he was real concerned. Said, uh, you know, just just uh, which the marshal was here. With, with the mention of the deputy, he, um, uh, the, the man rolls his eyes. He says, "Yeah, that's what you get for hiring your in-laws." He was like, "All right." Name's Moses Drulard. He doesn't he say sheriff, it. but he also doesn't seem to hide the badge uh, pinned to his his coat. He goes. So, before you come any closer, though, let me hear your names. Did my hat say Amy Haddock? Jim Freeman. Lane McTaggart. And Bob Morrow. Oh, come on, you gotta say it right. <laughs> They call me Bob. <laughs> there, it <is. laughs> there, there it is. He goes, <laughs> Amy Haddock. Any relation to uh, Josephine Haddock? Runs the farm, the apple orchard. Yes, that uh, that would be that'd be my mother. Oh. Well then. And that that has um that has an effect on the landscape. All right, get over here. Keep your heads down. Just, uh, yeah, kind of hunker down and rush down up or down the hill uh, towards him. It's a little bit of cross in, in before you get okay. to the hill. Um, I he tells you you got four maybe five of them in the cabin up there. They've been picking off uh, wagons heading east or west. Got quite a collection, and uh, they're kind of holed up. It's taking shots out of, at anything that moves. I was going to wait till nightfall to try and get in closer. Just me by myself. I couldn't really uh, surround them. But, uh, and I got a little backup. That story could change. We heard gunshots just a few minutes ago. Did they spot you, or were they taking shots at another wagon? No, they... Uh, no, no, we've been having a conversation. <laughs> uh, Clay, looks like they speak your language. Well, I'll be happy to teach them the finer points of debate. All right. Well, like I said, it might be a little bit easier to move in uh, if it if we had a little bit more darkness to aid us. They ain't coming out. I know there's no way uh, out of the, this sort of a back uh, box canyon behind them. Uh, only way in or out from the up there is straight through this road. There's uh, no others, uh, no others with them. Just uh, who's hold four, up and four or five, as, as much as I can tell. And any visitors, you said uh, we we got the jump on them if if they come. Well, can't rightly say about that. Uh, I don't think there's m more of them. Uh, I think that all of them are up there. But yeah, we uh, we'd have to keep an eagle eye down the path this way, make sure that no one surprises us from behind. Now this is an important question here: alive or dead? Well, hmm. You know, when I set up, when I set out here, I, the intention was 
to bring them in alive. But they've been giving me a real hard time. And my patience is getting mighty thin. But if you so you know what you do what you have to hope you're now ready to bring hmm? hope you're ready to bring back four maybe five corpses if need be he says and he checks the the, sh the shells in his shotgun abigail here will cut a man in half and i'm in that cutting a man in half kind of mood So, with that, do you support um, Sheriff's uh, idea of wait until it gets dark or trying to move in early? I will be on board mm. with waiting for sure. That would be Amy's route. I'll wait. No Je Jeff's all right with waiting? Yeah. Um, I guess... I think this would play into cautiousness as well. Mm -hmm. uh, things that go bump in the night. Um, how much of that might uh, might I, uh, you know, try and keep keep top of mind as well? What do you mean? What do you if mean? We, if we wait to uh, if we wait till it gets uh, dark. Is there going to be other things uh, that uh, oh, might this be a question you, This is a question you're asking uh, uh, you, the Marshall, sheriff, sorry, or, sorry, or asking me, the, the player, yeah. or I mean the the the, the, the yes. marshal. <laughs> uh, um, who knows? That's a uh, you know. I mean, you're up in the mountains of, um, and uh, there's there could be things I, I out will, here, but actually. Uh, I'll I'll frame that to to the mar uh, to the sheriff. Uh, Moses, uh, while I'm fully on board with waiting out till dark and and getting after him, then is there any other concerns uh, once that sun goes down? I want to make sure there's nothing uh, coming at us from behind. Well, uh can't rightly say. I've been up here two nights now trying to starve these fe fellers out of their cabin. Um, ain't nothing taking a bite of me yet. Of course, maybe they just don't like a mouthful of leather. No, no that works for me. Alright. So, you wait. Um, because of the, the, the mountains in the area, actually it doesn't take too long before it starts getting dark up here. Uh, once it gets to about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, the shadows start creeping in. And, um, and it gets pretty dark pretty quick down here. And I am going to activate this next scene. Cabin in the woods. Ooh. So, uh, wait for the the stream to be able to see it. So, as you can see, tucked down there into the corner, underneath the trees, alongside the rock ridge, the four of you and Moses Drewler, and just up to the uh, the north. You can see uh, the general layout of the cabin in the in the surrounding area. He says, "Well, I figure once it gets uh, it looks dark enough, start moving in. I'll go up, give him one more chance." If you guys want to try and cycle around from one side to the other, come at them from the side, catch them unawares. They don't know you're here just yet.
any takers? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Where should we position mm -hmm. ourselves? Well, I'll leave that up to you. As far as I can tell, there's one window on this side. There's two on the others. I don't know how how many of them are being how many of them windows are being washed. However, I know there's a door in the back of the cabin. You guys can make it around to there. You might be able to get in, surprise them from behind. I'll uh I'll look over your shoulder there, Moses, and uh I'll get a shot on the guy in the doorway. If uh doesn't look like he's gonna be too cooperative. I'll do what I can to help him out with that. Alright. So as you move it uh, as you would move in here, uh if you are standing in any of the brightly lit areas coming out of the the, the cabin, uh the, there you'll have they'll have no penalty to hit you uh, if they take any shots if you stay in the sh slightly shadowy areas they um, but they get a but you are within line of sight of any of them they have a minus two and if you stay in the dark shadowy areas of the tree line then they have a minus four and I'm just gonna deal cards. Uh, and uh, we're gonna just and we're just gonna go in. Uh, uh, and uh, here we go. Yeah, so uh, you can see a bunch of names just got added in there. You got some uh, Reno Bauer, George Purdy, and Bushwhack Bill have all pulled cards. I'd like to uh, uh, Benny for a new card, please, Marshall, if I may. Well. Sure. I mean, uh, at this point, uh, this is just uh, to go ahead and throw it down, and uh, I'll, I'll deal you a new card. This is just to sort of pick out the order in which you guys are going to be moving in. Well, that's a good and fair trade, because you get the Red Joker. Oh! Ooh. Very nice. Earning everybody a Benny. And getting your Benny back. As I see, yeah. Yep, yeah, everyone got the Benny. Cool. Excellent. And uh, you can go at any point and interrupt anybody without any trouble. All right. Um, do you want to go first or do you want to wait? Um, I, I think I'll wait for... Um, so I wanted to, if possible, if I think that I can get over... Uh, to this ridge here that I see, if that mm -hmm. provides some visual cover. Uh, oh, yeah, to, it does. Okay, to line up uh, some sight there. But I want to make sure that, you know, even asking Moses if uh, he thinks I can creep over there without being noticed as well. That would be my uh, line of sight there I'm going for. Um, uh, Moses kind of like eyeballs it and he says, uh, I did. I moved back and forth a few times. Uh, no. Just be quiet well. about it. So we're all set up and all right so uh, i'm not going to um uh make you move your pace just yet until you get a little bit closer to the cabin but i will make you make a stealth roll versus uh the notice of anybody who's keeping a watch on that side to see if uh you get spotted doing so okay so give me that stealth roll That's a five. And uh, Reno Bauer, watching uh, the front of the cabin, rolls a three. So go ahead, put yourself where you want to, where you want on the other side of the cabin. There. He does not spot you moving across. Out, you're too far out and down, kind of the down the hill uh, from them, and it's the slope is very. Uh, steep enough that he just does not pick you out as you go as you move across. Um, Freeman, you're you're gonna go next, which is gonna be your um, action. Uh, I would like to move on up behind uh, one of these trees up here. Do I have to go around that ridge, or can I go over it? 
You can certainly uh, climb the ridge. Where uh, ping the board? Let me see where you where you're looking to head. Up. So I'd want to be here. Okay. Yeah. The, the, uh, your pace doesn't matter right now. I'm let, letting you post up anywhere south of the front of the cabin uh, before we start actually counting steps. So. All right. Just give me a stealth roll as you move up. Oh, yeah. Nine. That's real good. So sneaky. Very <laughs> sneaky. Uh, Reno does not rolls much better the second time, but still does not see hide or hair of you moving through. All right. Uh, moving down the list, Clayton, where are you planning to post up? Let's see. I'm going to try and post up about right here in the uh oh, in the shadow of those right. trees very close how are you gonna get there uh so let's see i'm probably i think i would go around by where uh amy is climb up the ridge and then kind of stick with the tree line around this area okay. to, to get up there all right um again Stealth roll. Oh, okay. Nice. Five. That's a success. Let's see. If Reno is... Ooh. All right. So as you get uh, across there, right, you climb up the ridge through the bushes here, uh, and move across the rustling in the bushes attracts Reno's attention and he fires a shot kind of wild into the bushes um, in your general direction you can see all the glass in the front windows are co it's completely blown out at this point he's been this is not the first bullet he's put through them at mm -hmm. things that are moving out there um, he's going to fire a shot it will be at a, a minus four uh, to uh, there's very little chance he's actually going to hit you, but could get lucky. All right. All right. So, uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to go uh, dark roll. Yeah, no. Bullet goes completely wild. Nowhere near you. But you do... Uh, you do get the feeling that he saw he saw some movement and just took a pot shot at it. Mm -hmm. He says, "I see you, Moses, Sheriff Moses. I told you, you stay back. You 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 you, you back off, and uh, you live another day." The voice calls out from inside the cabin. Walsh, you're up. Uh, moving to backup Jim, I think we will try to head, uh, now cover isn't really as important because we're in, we're in darkness. So I think, Pretty much, uh, yeah. yeah, he'll set up, uh, with his, uh, back to the, to that tree. Okay. But that's going to require a stealth check as well, I assume. Yep. Oh, yeah. You guys are stealthy as all hell. An all oh. tarnation. <laughs> 23. Yeah, I'm going to say that Reno's so busy looking out the other window, he doesn't even get a check to spot you as you come up on that side. Um, all right. Can I push it further, further towards uh, the side of the building, or do we still want to be down below the... The cabin. Uh, you still, I still want you to be south of this before the next round. That's fair. You... Okay. Um, and then Moses comes in. Uh, he comes up to the, the fence post here. Kind of hunkers down behind it. And calls out to uh, the voice that just, you know, uh, was yelling from inside the cab. And he says, Reno! I'm a patient man, but you have worn that patience 
to its thinnest point. You come out now, lay your arms down, and you will live to see your trial. You make me come in there and take you by force, there will be very little of you to bury. Do you hear me? There's another gunshot. Echoes out from the cabin. The response. He goes. And he, uh, Moses looks back at you, Amy, and he says, Conversation. <laughs> All right. And with that, let's see. Uh, Reno. Reno took an action. The other two are uh, are on hold. So let's see if I can remember how to do that here with this. Uh, do they? All right, so nope. I'm just going to s deal another round here. Okay, we got here. Clayton pulls the high card, and now we're in actual pace based movement here. Clayton, you pull the high card. Oh. What would you like to do? Okay, uh, so. I am, against my better judgment, going to continue moving. Okay. And I'm going to move a full six, let's see, six inches would be, it's going to get me like right about here, still within the, the tree line. Yep. All right, as you move up, um, you can make a snow, uh, uh, you, you kind of sneak up, but I'm not going to have you make the roll because actually Reno has no line of sight on you there. As you, 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 you're outside of his, you know, his arc there and at the corner of the building. You can apparently only see uh, just a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right of, the, of, those, win of those front windows. And the rest is uh, no man's land. Moses goes on hold. Freeman, say you're next. I'm gonna uh, take six more movements over here. Stealth? Mm -hmm. uh, no. All good. No? Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm staying in the tree line, but I want to go up a little further just in case they decide to come out the back. Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, Haddock, you're up. Uh, I'll just uh, sit here looking down the sight of uh, the rifle. And uh, if I see a head poke out, then, uh, that's what I'll be aiming for. Okay. And uh, Walsh. What's your plan? Reckon we do want to keep on moving up. Still nothing really showing out of the uh, out of those doors or windows. Um, I think we'll uh, keep on moving up, maybe head towards uh, Gem, actually. And even, oh, let's go ahead and make a pace roll. Let's run. All right. Uh, do pace rolls explode? No, no, no. 12 okay. was I didn't pass. think so. Yeah, okay. So I think uh, we stick to the shadows, but um, move it on up. All right, you get into that lineup. You can see clearly through that window, and you can make out a figure in there. Uh, as you move in, as you move across that line, give me a stealth roll. Uh... 
Let us see. Come on. Wild Dine. Not Three. so much. All right. Three! <laughs> well, he spots you. Anyway, I'm going to say he spots you. Um, this window had not been shot out, and there's an explosion of glass as a um, as um, as it is blown out. A uh, figure takes a shot at you from uh, from inside the what looks like maybe a kitchen or something in the cabin. Uh, the Colt Frontier, but you know you still have the darkness to to protect you. So his five, which would have hit. Um, slams into the tree instead leaves a big old hole in it Sh uh, shrapnel of uh, wood splinters kind of fly off but you're on you're you're all good but you do feel very exposed out there in front of the tree and you hear right. another voice from inside go he's coming around the side no he ain't he's up front uh and new round means new cards. Walsh, you got the next action. All right, starting us off strong. Um, what sort of cover am I looking at against uh, Mr. George Purdy? Um, he's well, the only thing you've got right now in your favor is uh, um, the darkness and maybe a, a little bit of cover from. No, actually, just the darkness at the moment just the darkness and he's does he have heavy cover from being in the doorway or shooting yeah. out the window shoot from yeah he's got heavy cover in the window okay um oh well, that's gonna be a long way running up um oh i'm tempted just to to flank it on up i think i'm gonna roll pace die again and uh uh i, I feel like confusing them is is into our advantage here so if we can be ghosts surrounding the the whole building i think that's great so uh yeah just one action of running up sticking to the shadows okay oh not Ooh. nearly so good that time that's a, so, a total seven of movement there okay all right uh, uh and then another stealth roll you probably want uh no he's he, um if you're running uh there uh He's gonna just take another shot at you as you move as you move through. He, you've okay. been spotted, yep. so and right. he's already yeah, right. So he takes another shot. He st you still you still have the protection of the darkness as he as he does so. So, but pull it goes Ooh. wide. Uh, all right, uh, Freeman, you're up next, and you're muted. There we go. I I'd, I'd like to um I think I'm going to move behind this tree. So uh, the tree that Morrow was just in front of right here. Okay. Hey, um, Do I have to roll since they're mm -hmm. in, looking in the area? No, no, he's still, he's definitely following a uh, Walsh there. Kay. Um sorry, Morrow. Um mm -hmm. you got to fix that. Uh, James, who's uh, in the hunting grounds at the moment, if I can get you to click on uh, the little, the three little boxes on the far left-hand side of the panel, and then click on the little red icon that says for, uh, of a house that says foreground layer, uh, that will that should turn on the roofs and the buildings for you, so you um, so that the folks at um, at at home can see what uh, the players are seeing as opposed to what the GM sees. Uh, I thought the, I thought the folks at home might like to get a, a chance to see that. Uh, uh, far left tile controls. Foreground layer. OK. All right, so. Uh, so yeah, so you, you head on over there. Anything else? Uh, no, I think I'm just gonna wait. I don't want to spring too soon. I'm looking to the sheriff for, uh, his, his go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, well, it's his turn next. Um, uh, Moses, uh, 
Moses, uh, seeing that you guys are all moving in, decides to make his uh, his try as well. Uh, takes a, a run. He's got ten movement to go with. He's gonna run for this this uh, this horse fence over here on the other side, kind of like shore up against it. Uh, because it's movement that's passing through that uh, the field of vision of that of whoever's guarding the front, he's gonna also uh, he, well he's not gonna get a uh, a stealth roll because he's running, but the guy uh, watching the door still get, still has to succeed at his notice roll to spot Moses as it goes through, and he fails. So he's still looking off in the direction of Clayton. Does not see Moses come in from the other side. Haddock, you're up. Do I have a visual on anyone yet? Uh, inside the building? Yes. Windows uh, in? Not from there, no. Okay. You have you have two narrow windows on either side of the front of the cabin and a door in the center. The door's shut. The windows are all blown out glass. And um, the bullet appears to be coming from uh, somewhere in a different line of sight from you at, the, at those windows. He's standing where he can. He's standing where he can kind of look out both windows at the same time, a little bit further back in the cabin, and you're just not able to see him from there. Yeah. I really don't like rushing uh, into trouble like this. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold uh, at least one more moment. Uh, rifle up, just uh, at the ready to see if uh, somebody pops out. Okay. Uh, Reno's gonna, uh, doesn't have any line of sight on anybody. Um, he's gonna fire another shot, but it's more of a warning. You know, you know, back off. Back off, Sheriff! I mean it! Clayton, you're up. Alrighty. Uh, so... I guess to kind of round things out here. I'm going to move to the very edge of the tree line here. Mm -hmm. uh, right up against the side of the house, kind of watching this uh, this other window over here. Okay. And also watching the door, and I'm going to move uh, make sure. There we go. i move right there. All right. All good. Uh, there is no shot uh, taken on you. And next round. Ooh, uh, Reno uh -oh. pulls the uh, pulls the joker. Uh, but Walsh, what are you going to do? Well, yeah. Still muted. There you go. Apologies for that. Um, I think I'm going to drop that, that pace die again and uh, uh, keep up the flank. Just going to keep on moving around. We'd heard that there was a door. It looks like we got a pathway there out to the shed and the well. So uh, keep on getting into position. Oh, better than better not. Uh, so sticking to the shadows. Uh, and yeah, just heading to the northwest. Okay. Uh, is that from there? Can I see if the door is open? Uh, you can see a door. It's right about here. Right uh, there. Yeah, but there is no, it is not open now. Okay. You can also see a door uh, the and no, over here, but yeah. Right. Okay. And no windows in the back anymore. Right? No like windows the, in the we back. We don't see light leaking out there. Beauty. Okay. Okay. Um, Front door is right here in the center of the cabin for everybody else. All right. Curious to know what chat is seeing inside the building, but uh, hopefully Bob will be breaking down that door pretty soon. Well, they're not seeing anything now. They're seeing the roofs. They saw. They got a sneak peek of what's inside the cabin. Oh. oh okay. Nice. Okay. All right. Uh. uh all right, and so, it, yeah, uh, I don't know if I can make a 
call to uh, Freeman, but I definitely want Jem to know where I am. Maybe flash an iron or something. If uh, hoping hoping she can he can see me uh, back there. Moses leaps over the horse fence, uh, rolls through the the uh, the, uh, through the the roots and the underneath the tree, and kind of moves up alongside one side and presses himself against it. Um, give Reno another chance to notice that out of the corner of his eyes. He does so. He does not. He roll. He critically fails on that oh! notice roll. <laughs> oh. Nice time for it. Even with the black Joker, uh, he does not see what goes on out of the corner of his eye there. He's like, he's just, he, but his voice calls out a little bit more nervous now. George, I think maybe there's more than one of them. Freeman, you're up. I, uh, I'd like to, I think I'm gonna just move a little closer to Moro. Okay. Back in here. Right there. So, like, next to this bush. Okay. Uh, Trying to be as sneaky as I can. Give me a stealth roll, because there is a chance that Purdy will see you moving. Okay. Three. That is a better than uh, it's better than just oh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. I spoke too soon. Spending a Betty. Spending I wanna, a Betty. I want to right, try the. That is a success. Let's see if how he does. Oh, oh, oh! Seventeen. Come on. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. As you move through the bush, I mean, you got plenty of cover. I wouldn't worry too much. But he does see you moving. He, and takes another shot uh, out the window as you do so. Uh, uh, trust me, I would have preferred that roll rather than the notice roll. A three, bullets go wide. You're still good. All right. Hopefully, Attic, hopefully he next. thinks that. Uh, hopefully he thinks I'm Moro. <laughs> Haddock, you're up. Oh, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about them rushing to the back. Cause if they all come out the front, I have my hands full. <laughs> well, Moses does not appear to be rushing towards the back. He's just taking cover on the on one side of the, okay. the house. He, um, um, he bef- uh, uh, a little retcon as he was moving up. He says, "I'm." He's going to try and approach the front of the cabin, but from the corner because no line of sight. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm just going to move a little bit to the left along the wall here, uh, just to maybe give a little bit better line of sight down the side of the house as well. That far down, it's a, the, the, the ridge is uh, much higher. Yeah, because oh, you okay. can't see over it. All right, well then... No, nope, I'll just stay where I am then. Uh, okay. Stubborn, cautious Amy will wait and see. Yeah, cautious indeed. All right, Clayton, you're up. Okay. Uh, have we had besides gunshots coming from inside the house? Have we had any indication of where anyone is? Uh, you definitely got an idea that there's somebody in the front of the cabin, in roughly. Uh, this area. I'm going to ping a spot on the board. Okay. Uh, and you, you, it's hard to say, but somewhere in the, in the opposite side of the cabin, you hear you heard gunfire coming from over there. That's about okay. the only thing you know. Gotcha. Um. I mean, Clayton's itching for a fight, but he's not a moron, so... I think at this point... I'm just gonna move forward a little bit up to, uh, like, the very side of the house. 
uh, where I can still see the porch but remain in the tree line and wait for someone to step out. Just waiting for someone to come out of the cabin? Yes. Okay. Or at least waiting for someone to open fire, uh, like someone from my side to open fire. All right, next round. Moses pulls the high card. And uh, let's see. I'm gonna, what, yeah, he's going to need some uh, running to get there in one action. He is going to go for it. Come on, give me that roll. One. Okay. He gets seven. So he, he comes running for the cabin, but kind of there's a, there's a right here. There's a bunch of wood where they've been chopping firewood for the for the, the chimney or something, and it, he he tries to like leap over it, catches his foot, and only move, uh, and kind of like stumbles there to the ground. He doesn't make it all the way to the edge of the uh, of the cabin, but uh, lucky for him, no one has line none of, no one in the cabin has a line of sight on him. Clayton, you're up. Okay. Um... So I guess Clayton kind of looks over, sees that display of athleticism, <laughs> and he just mutters under his breath, ah, hell. And I'm going to jump up on the porch. I'm going to move six inches and see if I can actually breach uh, with the six-inch right. movement. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's move. take this uh, one square at a time as you move up. Okay. Uh, so just use the WASD keys to like walk onto the porch. Okay. And as you do so, you should see the the porch disappear for you. The the porch cover. Gotcha. All right. And then as you get there, mm -hmm. in front of the doorway, you're staring right into the face of Reno Reno uh, Reno Bauer. As, you said in front uh, of the doorway. As you know, as you right here. Oh, gotcha. Just right there, you're uh, there's the window, Reno Bauer. Uh, who takes... Uh, no, you know what? He critically failed his role. Uh, so he's... Um, I'm going to carry have that carry over from the last round. Mm -hmm. uh, he's standing right there, but he's got his gun down and looking out the other window as you, as you, as you come passing in front of that window. All right. I'm going to put... Uh, I'm, I'm going to do my two-gun kit and put two shots in Reno Bauer. All right. Through the window. Yep, through the window. All right, let's let's see that. Give your give him light cover for the window. Okay. So that's a three. Yep. Do we have any plus ones? I I use a plus one. All right, so that's a hit. Roll damage. Okay. That's a nine. Uh, Reno Bauer goes, um, uh, we didn't have him targeted, but Reno Bauer uh, just takes a bullet right square in the chest and drops to the ground, squealing. Okay. Uh, can I see anyone else? Uh, you can. Y yeah, you can just barely make out George Purdy uh, further in the, in the house there. Uh, I'm going to turn up. Uh, so yeah, you can see another guy standing off in the next room in the kitchen, but where he's particularly uh, positioned from that window, you can just catch uh, sight of him. Okay. But, we're gonna, but I will call it medium cover. All right, then I'm going to take a shot at him. Put medium cover on him. Yeah, that's a um, I'm going to spend a Benny on that one. All right. To re-roll. So. So uh, actually, all you did, did it. How did you spend that Benny? Oh, I just did it from a character sheet. Should yeah, I have? If, um, oh, yeah, let me give it. Let me give you that Benny back. You see right okay. there on the roll you made. Yeah. Um, the miss. There's a little Benny picture right there. Gotcha. There we go. If you click that. It'll it'll spend the Benny for you. And immediately make the roll. There we nice. go. Nice. That's a hit. I'll roll damage. Alrighty. 
five. All right, and that is enough to shake George Purdy, but uh, not uh, not put him out of the fight. Okay. But he is shaken. All right. Ooh. Reno Bauer is incapacitated. Um, Purdy is shaken, but he's got the next card. He attempts to unshake. Okay, one second. Uh, there we go. He uh, does not roll well enough, and uh, but I'm gonna have him spend a Benny and to unshake. He spins around, uh, having gotten shot, uh, moves up to the uh, moves up to the corner of the building, giving himself a little bit more, uh, uh, giving him a better line of sight. He takes a shot at you through the window. Uh, okay. He, he, you're going to have pretty good cover through that window, uh, but he's going to take a. Uh, there's a small chance. I'm going to give you medium cover as he takes that shot. Yeah, he fails. Well, it goes uh, wide, and then he kind of ducks back behind a wall, and you can't see him anymore. Okay. Uh, and uh, Freeman, you're up. You can hear gunshot is definitely erupting on the other side of the building. Can I see uh, in through that window from where I am, or am I too far away? Uh, you can see him through the window now, actually. Okay. I'm going to come just up here. I'm only going to move like four. Okay. And can I take aim at him? I can't see because the roof is still on, but can I shoot him through the window? Uh, you can try. Give him medium cover. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Ignore that first. <laughs> oh my god. So I accidentally clicked damage. Oh, I see. So this the 6 is the success, not the fancy damage. Yeah, but you know what? It um uh 6 will hit and uh and um yeah, and yeah. And uh, I'm going to take the damage. Why not? Uh George Purdy uh uh, gets mighty gruesome from your uh, Winchester there. Uh, you see him just sort of slump against the wall uh, and then kind of slide down in a pool of his own eviscera. Uh, that's two of these guys down. The only two that you've you've uh, picked up on a location for so far. Haddock, you're up. I'll take one quick glance uh, before me uh, just to see if I happen to have any line of sight on anyone. Uh, you do not. Okay. Other than Clayton. Now's your chance. Ah, oh, hell. You can do that thing we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I will... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run, uh, run up towards the house. Okay. Uh, you can move six plus your one and die. There you go. Nine total. Let's get to the end of the fence post, basically. All right. And that's uh, it. Anything, anything else you're doing while you're uh, after running? No. All right. Mauro, you're up. All right. Bob is going to draw his carbine and might have some multi-actions here and may well need to uh, run as well but um, heading to that back door and kicking it open. Uh, you're definitely going to have to oh, run yeah. to get there in one action. All right. Uh, hopefully. So, uh, see, uh, give, give us a running die roll and see how much more you can move. All right, so you get Ooh, there nice. and you can we move got a little four bit more. Over. You can move four more after All you right. get to the door. Okay. Can we uh, kick down that door? Maybe uh, athletics test or strength roll? Or, uh, or maybe it's open. Maybe they don't lock it. It's a back door. <laughs> I'd say they probably put some, uh, they got some piece of like wood uh, locking 
latch kind of thing. So an athletics to both bust it open. All right. Um, uh, what if I had a shotgun round instead? I'm wielding a Lamat. That uh, would probably do the trick. Uh, yeah. All right. It it's just it's just one shot from that shotgun, but I reckon uh, he'll target the target the door and uh, yeah, don't even need to roll. Try to blow that. it open. Don't even need to roll for that. You 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 put the shotgun slug into the door and it swings wide open. You have four more movement. All right. Um, now, if I pull up, I'm going to move forward with uh, WASD, and then hopefully it should be revealed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, lovely. All right. So, let's see, two bloody men. That's one. Uh, two more. Or, sorry, yeah, two. Uh, and is that door open or closed? That door is to... uh, is open. Yeah, it's it. All right. And you see, uh, and he hears you as you go. He clearly hears you when you shotgun the back door open, spins around, and it would be uh, an opposed roll to see which one of you goes first. First, he was he, he was on hold. All right, so hold. that'll be yeah. so yeah, he, that'll uh, be an so athletics he test. He he makes his athletics to try and beat your agility. Uh. All right, so that's five. Five. Uh, and that's I do get athletics, or do I roll agility? Which you're roll? rolling agility. Awesome. I may have gone um, down that backwards, but this is what we're doing. No, no worries. All right, eight. You go first. Uh, but that was a total. I apologize. I should oh, have. I'm sorry. Uh, didn't didn't roll that well. Thing. It should just be a five. Five. Yeah. Five. You still. Um, you still beat his roll. Or you, you, you got. Um, you rolled uh, equal to his, which means um, okay. The normal course of action moves forward. The normal course of action would be you completing the rest of your turn. So go ahead. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so I'm at a minus two because of the run. Yeah. Uh, I'll just have one action. Uh, I'll use it, and then I'll use a free action to switch from shotgun mode to uh, rifle mode on the carbine. Uh, and target him. Hello, Bushwhack Bill. Have we met before? <laughs> oh, I failed to include the minus two in that, so that will fail. That will miss. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll Benny it. That will uh, still, miss. still going to miss. Uh, Cause you didn't include the, uh, yeah, because you didn't include the minus two still. Yeah. I didn't so, include it the um, second time. Nope. So you take a shot at him, but it goes wide. And next round. Uh, okay, and down. Bob's. I think Bob still has two more movement left, so he's going to move deeper into uh, the cabin, if that's all right. Uh, yeah, sure. Grab Certainly. Some, that would grab that some would, cover uh, there. That would definitely give you some cover. He wouldn't uh, otherwise be uh, bushwhack. Would get the rest of his uh, action, uh, but you you dive out of the way. He's going to move to the corner of the. Um, of the room then and kind of like poke out take a shot at you uh this close however i think he's probably gonna have to hit your parry uh let's see let's make sure you're targeted and a two is not gonna cut it <laughs> all right into the right round and uh first card is ooh, First card is Moro. Pulls the high Moro, card with the all Ace right. of Hearts. Um, I think um, Bob is ready to um, either punch Bushwhack Bill or just uh, try to knock him out with the butt of his of his carbine. He's not this close. He's not going to uh, to shoot. Okay. Uh, so uh, maybe a, a the, uh, fighting the punch. Test? Use the use the punch. Um... Uh, in your quick access there to um, to simulate. This. All right, can do. I'm having trouble trouble targeting Bushwhack. Maybe I got him there. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with two actions on this. So he's getting uh, possibly two, two butts of the. Okay. Yeah. All right. So minus two to both. Don't forget to minus click minus two, two on right the on. Rolls. Okay. All right. Should work. 
Ooh, that's not going to do it. Uh, no, it is uh, not. Let's try... You let's didn't, try it this. looks like you rolled damage there. You didn't roll the actual... Oh, apologies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you got to click the roll button. Right. That's better. But still probably not enough for his parry. At a three? Uh, nope. It will not beat his parry. All right. We'll try our second action. Still at a minus two. Uh, and he's, yeah, definitely getting the rifle barrel here. There oh, yeah. we go. Yeah, that is a six to hit, and that will hit him. Roll damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Add a d4 to that uh, for the rifle barrel, for the rifle butt. Oh, beauty. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All that's right. a little keep better. Keep adding d4s. So that's a that's a four. There we go. That is enough. That, right. so that that'll uh, be eight total. Yeah, eight total is a enough to shake him, but not uh, enough to drop him. So he will right. get a chance to recover. So and word was oh. we are accepting f or expecting four or five men uh, in this building. Yeah. Yeah, and you're only seeing that was. You've only got have three accounted for. Only seen three. All right. All right. Um, so Havoc, I reckon I'll pull back, just with. Uh... You don't have any more actions. Oh wait, no, I get you. Uh, you I still I'm have sorry, my six movement. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cool. Take it back. I, I was thinking about the last round. Awesome. All right. Yeah, just duck back up uh, there. Okay. Haddock, you're up. I will continue running in towards the house, and uh, in addition to that, see where that gets me. Ten. Okay, yeah, it gets me right to, the to the porch. And I will, uh, on my way running, uh, I'm going to um, yeah, I'm still going to do that. I'm going to uh, support Clayton and say, uh, on my way running up. Uh, Clayton, you better have them all dead before I get there. <laughs> Working on it. All right, Bushwhack is up next. He gets a chance to try and unshake. Uh, can I... Uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, was there something else you were going to do? Just I, with with a support roll, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Persuasion sorry. good for that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, minus two with running, correct? Uh, sure. Three is not enough. Okay. You can you take do. a plus one from the yeah, from the I'll hunting take it. rounds. All right. So the next thing that Clayton does is plus one. Awesome. Bushwhack goes first, however, attempts to unshake. Roll the five is unshaken and may act normally. He uh, and he no longer has to hit Wal uh, Morrow's parry. Brings his gun up level. Takes his shot. Straight up, no penalty to the roll. Rolls a two! <laughs> oh, I'm so frustrated. All right. Uh, <laughs> Freeman, you're up. Okay. Um, so, can I... Um... Can I roll a running die to try and get close to that that back cabin, that little shed? Uh, you, you certainly can. It's on the far side. Yeah, I just want to get a little closer. Like I, I feel like the guys inside can handle it. I don't think I can see anybody else in there, right? I just saw the one guy. Mm, through the window? No, you can't see anything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. So I'm going to keep going around since everybody else now is inside. Um... I'm going to keep snooping. Four. So I can move ten. ten. That's correct. I'm going to go... Here. Okay. And Moses is up. Dude, how much you got? You got... All right, so he's going to run... He has to in order to get to the door, the door in an action. Come on, give me that. 
Why is that not working? All right, D6. Six, he's got a full 12 movement. He goes running up the... Um... He comes running up the, the porch, kicks open the door, comes in, points his uh, shotgun down the long hallway at, at Bushwhack Bill. And, and just kind of yells out, Bill, you drop that gun now, or I'm going to put you in an extra short coffin. And that's just going to be a uh, an intimidation roll, but made uh, at minus two because he had to run to get there. Uh, and uh, I, for some reason, did not give him intimidation, but I'm going to say he is an intimidating man, and I'm going to roll uh, something. Uh, I'm just going to roll some dice for him to represent that. All right. Let's uh, let's try that again. Moses rolls a seven, which is intimidating, but not enough to sh not enough to let. Uh, Likely not enough to shake this guy. Let's see. Uh, spirit. Rolls a three. Yep. He is going to uh, distract Bushwhack Bill. So anything else that he Bushwhack tries to do is going to be at a minus two. All righty. And Clayton, you're up. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to move a full six inches this time. I'm going to breach... Uh, like run through the door and everything. Right. So let's see. That put me right about there. Completely run past him and everything. And I'm going to shoot Bushwhack Bill. All right. So... Uh, would he have cover against me, or is... I don't say just... he's got light cover, because he's half in the door, half in the doorway there. Okay. Yeah, Alright, so that four. is a... That's a hit. Yep. Oh! Do you want to spend a Benny on that, on that damage roll? <laughs> yes, I do. Alright. <laughs> Alright, 11. Yeah, that, and with that, um... Bushwhack doesn't get a chance to drop that gun, and, and um, um, he goes—he goes, goes flying against the door frame, cracks his head, slides down, and he is out. And I just—I turn and look at the sheriff, and I go, "He surrenders." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, remind me, old hunting grounds. How long do we have till the uh, the break? All right, so we're going to go to break. Everyone get up, stretch your legs, and we'll be, be back here for the aftermath. Quick, yes. Open your eyes. We've arrived, my friends. To a place of such abundance and beauty, like none have ever seen before. Misty Mountain Gaming has all you could ever need for your tabletop role-playing accessories. Metal dice, acrylic dice, dice trays, and many other tabletop role-playing accessories can be found within the halls of MistyMountainGaming.com. The forge is always hot. The tanners and tailors always working to create new and improved equipment for adventurers such as yourselves. And just for joining us on this journey, Take 10% off of your entire cart with the coupon code VALOR at checkout, saving you a little extra gold for that tankard of ale waiting for you at the inn. So grab what you need and start your journey now by heading to MistyMountainGaming.com where you too can find the treasure of a lifetime. Hey, welcome back. Hi, uh, uh, everyone back, rested, refreshed. We got a 
cool, refreshing beverage during our break? How about you folks at home in the hunting grounds? We're done with that ad break, and I'd like to return you all to the cabin in the woods. After busting in <laughs> and shooting down these three road agents, uh, you have two men unaccounted for. I return you to the action now. Moses is, uh, goes, well, I'd question one of them, but I don't think that's really an option. Uh, uh, all those of these three men have been shot and are down, they're not necessarily dead. In Deadlands, they each get a vigor check. If they succeed on their vigor check, they're actually just shot but alive. Um, so let's go through and take care of that right now. Uh, so Reno Brower is... Alive. Hey, look at that. George Purdy is alive. Well, maybe there will be somebody to question. And Bushwhack Bill. Alive. All three of these guys are just shot. Not dead. So, um, Marshal Moses, or sorry, Sheriff Moses, uh, begins to question uh, Purdy, who uses, where is the rest of you? I know there's more than just the three. Purdy's coughing up blood, kind of lean up against the, the cupboard, and he's just like, <coughs> oh, come on, Sheriff. I'm shot here, man. You gotta give me a break, okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, I heard it before. Where are the other two, and where's the money? The, and Purdy kind of like points across the uh, uh, the building to the uh, to a little trap door in the floor in the living room, and says, "Money's down there." Tom and David are too. And he kind of like, goes, "I'm feeling tired." And he kind of lays back and kind of tries to close his eyes. Moses turns and uh, looks at the trap door and says, uh, looks around to see who else is in the room. Where is everybody else during all of this? Uh, Clayton, you're standing in there in the room with him, right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. Haddock, do you do you come in to the building? Yeah, if we come out of initiative movement, then I would yeah, yeah. definitely yeah, come yeah. in. Yeah, just into the doorway. All right. Um, Morrow? Uh, I think Bob has placed some cuffs on William. Uh, okay. But uh, also placed him in like in, into a comfortable spot where uh, he's not bleeding out too much. If he can even provide a a, a little bit of uh, uh, first aid to to him, I I think he would tie off the wound wherever Clayton got him good. Okay. And um, and uh... but. Uh, would would maybe sort of open up the door like i i, I figure he maybe walked through uh uh the hole that he blasted with the shotgun but uh as a general measure of kindness towards jim he opens up the door and invites jim in uh over the threshold the the proper way not through the right. hole that bob jim, entered were you, gonna, were you gonna go check out that shed before you came in the building so i was i just wanted to uh kind of like roll by this this door and kind of see what everybody is doing before I head over there. All right. So, well, it takes a little... Uh, the, the interrogation of uh, of George Purdy there to, uh, takes a few minutes. So that's still going on when you first show up. You mm -hmm. can go check out the, uh, the the shed if you like. You don't have... Um... Do I have to worry about pace? No, no. We're kind of in a narrative moment here. Okay. Um, as you do, you walk, you follow the path, uh, you walk past an old kind of, um, overgrown well along the path mm -hmm. and give me a notice roll. Can I have, uh, gone along with Jem? I think that's something sure. I would very likely have gone. Okay. So Jem comes in and like, uh, where are you off to? And, uh, and tag along. Okay. Then both of you can I'm give gonna... me notice rolls as you pass the well. I'm going to spend a Benny. Back here at the well. 
Ooh. Ouch. That's a critical see. failure. That's what you get for attempting the fates. Trips and uh, falls man. in the well. <laughs> Sorry, I don't need to give the martial ideas. Don't. <laughs> uh, and see, uh, Amy, um, yeah, so actually with a critical failure on the notice roll, Jem doesn't even pay it, doesn't even know that the well's there. Completely misses it as she's as uh, they're walking by. Mm -hmm. um, Amy, I've you, there. you step up and kind of look down uh, into it. You can kind of hear, um, hear some some weird scritchy noises coming from the well, but you're not sure what it what it is. I will. Uh, assuming Jem probably walks, you know, walks right past it, uh, completely yeah. oblivious to it. Uh, as that catches my ear, I'll reach out, grab him by the arm, and just uh, just kind of put a, not say anything, but just kind of gesture up towards my ear and point down towards the well. And, um... Okay. And then can probably I roll suggest... my... Go ahead. Can I, can I roll my danger sense? Oh, you have danger sense. I forgot. I do. Uh, yeah. That's, again, just a notice at a minus two this time. Okay. How do I do a minus two? Yeah, you that? click on the little modifiers for better rolls, the spin out a little thing underneath the, the chat cards. There's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of little buttons. Just click minus two on the trait roll modifier. Okay. And hit roll. Minus two got it and roll yeah that's a three you can i can i take can i take one of those group plus ones you you certainly may all right and with that that brings your uh, total up to a four and as you kind of approach the well um you get a very distinct feeling of um there's something wrong here uh, okay. Yeah, oh, a real strong feeling of the heebie-jeebies starts crawling up your spine. Okay. Meanwhile, back in the cabin, uh, Moses and uh, Moses has just been told that the the other two and the cash are down in the basement. And uh, Moses turns and looks at the at the the, uh, the trap door in the floor, and he says, "Don't suppose either one of you want to go down there." Check it out. Ah, hell, I'll go check it out. Not alone, you won't. Appreciate it. All right, so you make your way over to the uh, over to the trap door, flip mm. it open, and uh, uh, you should see a little icon there. It looks like some stairs. Yep. Click on that icon, and it'll activate another page here. Ooh. Wow. Map is already updated. That's fantastic. Um, as you come down the stairs, there is definitely a man down here, Thomas Fry, and he's got his gun out, and he's paranoid, um, but he's just like, uh, he's like, he's waving the gun, and he's covered in blood. Uh, real quick, drawing cards again. Thomas Fry, um, yeah, let's see, I, uh, let's see if I can, I, don't, I didn't make the figure um, properly uh, bloody, but he's covered uh, his face, his hands are all slick and covered with blood. Uh, uh, as you, for, who's the first one down the stairs? Uh, I reckon I'd let Clayton go first since he volunteered. But <laughs> yep. uh, if he doesn't want to, Bob's happy. Bob's happy to be the the first one down. Yeah, okay. I'd go down. I'll go down first. Clayton, you come down and you, uh, real quick, you 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 clock uh, the fries there. Um, you see the blood, and I quickly look off to the 
to your right, and you can see through a little partition. Um, uh, even more blood and what looks like severed body parts. Oof. Um, Thomas Fry says, get me out of here. Alrighty. Uh, do you, uh, he uh, holds the gun at you and, and tells you to back up. Get away from the ladder. If you want to get out of here in anything other than a pine box, I suggest you put that thing down, boy. He takes a shot at you. Uh, he's got the high card, so. There we go. Yep. That'll, Hit an array. That'll do it. <laughs> For all, all of uh, nine damage, a wound. Okay. So uh, you gonna uh, apply that? Uh, apply that. Uh, you can try and soak that with a with a with a Benny, if you'd like. There is a little button there in this in the chat to soak that damage, or you can take it. Uh, I'll try to soak. Let's see, where's the... Oh, there it is. Five is enough. You soak the wound, you're not shaken, and you're not wounded. Uh, and Morrow, you got the next card. I reckon I'm going to go on to hold. Um, but when you say covered in blood, it's all over Tom's body? Like everywhere? Or... Um, pretty much. And, and, okay. He's not like it doesn't look like he's been bathed in blood, but he looks real gory. Okay. Uh, yeah, I reckon I'll pop into hold and let uh, uh, let Clayton decide what what transpires from here. He drew on Clayton first, wounded him first. Mm-hmm. Well, he almost wounded him. Sorry, he, you're, worried, you're right. You're, right. you're worried Clayton. That, Mara, uh, that Clayton got hit, uh, but it looks like it, it just sort of grazed him. Clever dodge, son. All right, so, Mara, you're just going to go on hold? Yes, please. All right, Clayton, you're up. Yeah, I'm just drawn and firing. I'm assuming no cover or anything like that? Nope, no cover. All righty. Four is gonna hit. Okay. Eleven will uh, will be enough to drop him. Alrighty. And, uh, yeah, he is. Uh, and with that, he does he drops and uh, uh, into a into a pile of his blood and whoever else's was all over him. On me, you son of a bitch <laughs> uh, I think Bob is pretty curious to see what's over to the east and uh, just ignores Tom and uh, heads on over to uh, investigate what happened in that room yeah I'd, right. I'd follow him after dropping that guy alright uh, you move on over there hang on one second uh, this, you see what appears to be the remains of a body torn asunder. Um, arms and legs ripped off, uh, guts kind of spewed all over the place, rib, cra rib cage cracked open. Uh, it is mighty gruesome, and I'm going to have you both make a spirit check. Local fear level is a three, so that's going to be at a minus one. This is just to see whether or not you can hold on to your lunch or your breakfast, uh, as the case may be. Annie's eggs. <laughs> That's three. That's a three. So it's a gruesome sight, and Clayton 
he's seen a lot of bloodshed in his life, but he this is something new. You could take a plus one. Sure, I'll take a plus one just to... All right, just to choke it back. Yep. Mm, need that protein. Uh, all right, you hold on to your uh, to your breakfast. Um, it is a very gruesome sight. Give me notice rolls now. Oh, right, what, what would the what would you like to do first? Uh, body torn asunder, blood everywhere. Uh, I've examined the body. If... Okay. What there is of it. Yep. All right. So, uh, notice roll? Yeah, sure. All righty. Uh, all right. Uh, and uh, hang on. I'm going to give a Fry his rigor check. What do you know? He made it. All right, so Fry gut shot drops his has dropped his pistol, but as you guys are examining the body, he begins to drag himself over to the ladder, desperate to get out of the basement. Um, unless anybody stops him, he begins to climb up it. He's dropped his weapon. Yeah, he leaves. He, le he leaves the gun on the ground there. All right, I'm happy to let uh, let the sheriff look after him once he gets up topside. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate, but if Bob could look down for levels of decay and or bite marks, I could drop an occult, but maybe it's just a notice. Uh, Clayton, with a success, um, let's see. You'd, uh, it, it is hard to figure out uh, from what remains what killed this guy. It does look like he was ripped, uh, uh, was ripped open, mm -hmm. though. Um, but what could have caused this? You don't see any bullet wounds. You don't see any claw marks. You don't see like big gashes or, or like knife wounds or anything like that. Um, and for the with a success, uh, all you can make out is a weird sc um, scrabbling sound as you're kind of looking over the body. Does the evidence of what I've seen point to this being gang member number five? Uh, yeah, that would be your guess. The, the blood the blood is still pumping like mm -hmm. this happened moments ago before you guys got down here Oof. Thomas Fry comes up uh, leaving a trail of blood behind him as he does so and collapses on on the on the ground in the up in the upstairs although uh, there's nobody up here to see it just Moses Mara, whatever did this is still down here. Meanwhile, Unless back at the well. Dumb. Meanwhile, back at the well. What is Amy and uh, and uh, Haddock? I'm sorry. What is Amy and Jem doing at the well? I think that uh, Jem would probably go and see if there was like rope or like a torch or something in that shed. Oh yeah, sure. Give me a uh, give me a notice roll to find find that. Okay. Oof. Uh, no. Or, <laughs> I, I don't know that I've ever seen two uh, uh, critical failures from one player in one game. That's that. I feel Wreck. like yeah. that's a that's that's this a trophy is, right there. This, this is a new low for Jem Freeman. Yeah, uh, no, no, you can find no rope in that shit. No, no, I can't. Jim, I don't. There's a whole bunch of tools, woodwork and stuff, uh, um, crates and all sorts of stuff to go through, and your mind boggles at what a fine shed this is. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a good feeling. 
about this gem. I'd say we just leave it be and catch up with the others. Paddock, did you follow her to the shed? Uh, I would have, yes. Okay. Well, I'll put you there in the doorway. Um... So I can't lunge out and get me from the well. And, huh? <laughs> and, uh, and right about that time, as you guys are turning around, something comes up out of the well. You see a, this slender, clawed arm hook. Ah. Dark red in the night. Uh, 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 latch into the side of the well and then pull itself up and you can hear the sounds of other things following it. Meanwhile, back in the cellar, the two of you, as you discuss what could have possibly done this, get a weird creeping feeling on the back of your necks as you both turn and look up at the ceiling of the cellar and see it covered in something moving. And uh, with that, we have a split combat going on almost at the same time. Uh, Clayton, get your <laughs> ass out here now. Uh, <laughs> we're going to deal with what's going on in the cellar first. And, uh, oop, hang on. There we go. A small, as you can see, the ceiling is covered in a swarm of these walnut-sized red ticks dripping with the blood of the fifth road agent as if they all just crawled out of him. And everyone down here in the cellar, give me a second spirit check. This time for fear. Uh, and no modifier to this one? Uh, minus one, still. Oh, oh, right. Local fear level. Nice job, Clayton. All Not right, so Mara. nice there, Bob. Mara uh, Bob's two. definitely... Bob, Bob Benny's that, faux show. Ugh, still fails. Still a failure. Uh, um, you want to take one of the stream plus ones? Or do you want to find out what the gear get... chart has to say? <laughs> mm, I don't really want to see. Wow. Oh, do we have any plus yeah. ones? I, I think we've got at least one plus one from the party. So, and, or, no plus. Oh, ones no plus ones board. left on that. Only okay. Benny's. Bob. Okay. Um, if if well if if the crew wouldn't mind, I will dig into uh, party bennies with uh, thanks to the hunting grounds to those that All provided right. them to us. Uh, and let's just uh, be better at role playing games. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You are better. Look at nah! that. Woo! All right. You have value Six it is. once again. Uh... <laughs> All right, so neither of you are afraid of the tick swarm, though maybe you should be. Um, as uh, once per round, it um, this prairie tick swarm attempts to drop down from the ceiling and crawl all over you. Um, and it deals 2d4 damage every round against every target in a medium blast template, which the both of you are in as you're examining the body. Um, so just straight up, uh, uh, first versus Clayton. Uh, six damage, which is enough to shake you. Okay. And Mar then against Morrow. <laughs> Two damage, which Ooh, is not enough to do wow. anything. But don't worry, Mara, you're not out of the woods yet. In addition to its automatic damage every round, it picks one person that's in its target and attempts to 
crawl inside their mouth and nose. <laughs> As these things no. from the ceiling, uh, squirming all over you, they attempt uh, a fight and roll to crawl inside. Uh, mm. uh, and so that's going to be you, as the there's more of you under the template than 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 uh, than Clayton. We did fall right into that trap. Emphasis on fall. Uh, four is not going to be enough to hit your parry, though. Oh, the parry saves us. <laughs> so I'll tell you what we're going to do, just to prevent um, the overheating of the hunting grounds. We're going to do three rounds down here, then we're going to jump over to the other the other instance of, of what's going on and do three rounds out there. All right, so uh, let's get some uh, some back to some fighting music, however, uh, which was let's go with uh, there we go. Certainly Terror regretting discharging uh, Bob's only shotgun round. I feel like <laughs> that might have been a little bit more effective against ticks than uh, doors. Hey, look at that, Mauro! You pulled the red Joker. Everybody get everybody down here gets Benny. I think I'm not sure if anybody oh, upstairs just, got just, one. Just paying back Todd Moon Bounce's uh, gift to us earlier. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. I know, I know, but you know what? I get to design the adventures. I I, I feel like it's like a, a little bit like adding insult to injury to then spend the bennies you guys are earning in order to make my night more gruesome. I'm gonna roll gruesome. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to hit and crawl up somebody's face. Um, <laughs> all right, so, Mauro, you got the red joker. Uh, the tick swarm is basically dropped off the ceiling onto the ground now and is swarming over the both of you. What would you like to do? Okay. Is it targetable by firearms, or is it better to start stomping on these things? Uh, or I have no idea. Give me an occult roll, or, or, or just right. common knowledge. Uh, I could drop a cult if that's all right. Not so good. No clue. Who knows? All right. Um. It does look like a big sized... swarm of little things. You're not sure how much right. one bullet's gonna do. Right. Um. Ah. Uh... I reckon before we get too crazy, could I try the effects of covering fire? Like that lets me target a small blast template? Uh, or is that... You need something automatic to do that. Hmm. All right. <laughs> so uh, uh, from a quick release holster that has not been opened within the last two episodes, um, uh, Bob pulls out what appears to be a Gatling pistol. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like it's appropriate to shout covering fire whenever you <laughs> drop covering fire. Uh, but I can find the rules for that as well. Uh, I'll get got it open here. Awesome. Real quick, suppressive fire, 107. Or sorry, suppressive uh, fire. Thank you. Yeah. It does use three times the usual number of bullets for its rate of fire. Okay. So you're basically going to have to empty that pistol to do it once. Uh, the pistol should should have like 30 or 40 rounds, I think. It's rate of fire. Uh, the Gatling or, pistol's uh, rate or, of fire is 10 is bullets. It's three. No, oh. Uh, uh, no. It, or, yeah, th rate of I fire thought, three means it's firing 10, it's firing 10 bullets. In a, in a, oh, right. Round. Okay. Okay. Right on. Okay. So it's going to uh, use so, yeah, all that's thirty all... of the round because you're just you're just spraying the whole area with, with all the bullets in the gun for suppressive fire. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I forgot that 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 was how uh, rate of fire multiplied. So, mm -hmm. we, yeah, let's. Who knows if this is going to work? But uh, 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 we're going to 
just drop 30 rounds into this whole room and uh, certainly be careful not to uh, mistake Clayton for uh, blood sucking tick. All right, so uh, give me a roll. You, you uh, just make a shooting roll. There's a straight up shooting roll. All right. Straight up shooting. Let's uh, let's hope she goes well. Uh, no, you don't. Don't don't. Uh... Oh, oh, sorry. That was with rate of fire. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Just a shooting one, eh? Mm-hmm. That's correct. Not so good. Uh, I will drop. Oh wait, um, I'm at plus two because of the Joker. Yes, you are. It, so it, that it, takes it, it to it, a five. It calculated that, did it not? It did not. It, did not. it didn't catch mine earlier. I noticed as well. So okay, um, interesting. We'll have to remember that. That I'll, I'll look okay. into what what's uh what's up there. All right. So that uh, five would be enough uh, to hit. Just distract it, but not enough to hit it. So uh, I'm going to use a personal Benny and uh, try that again. I'm going to drop in a plus two uh, modifier just for the for the Joker. I don't know mm -hmm. if it'll apply in Benny, but we'll test it out. Ah! No. All right. So there. Didn't apply uh, it, so six yeah, you, and you just a hit. You start spraying the room with bullets. Uh, you guys outside here just this amazing amount of gunfire start going off inside the build inside the, the cabin um, it's muffled but it's it, it's a great deal but you're a little bit distracted with your own problems um, uh, it is however not enough to uh, uh, well the, 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 the swarm seems to scatter for a moment out of the it does not appear to be dramatically affected in any way by, by the all those rounds flying at it. All right, uh, Clayton, you're up. First okay. must unshake. Yep, uh, that'd be vigor. Uh, that is uh, that is correct. No, spirit to unshake. Vigor to spirit. soak. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Okay, you can unshake and you can act at, as normal. Okay. Uh, so instead of going for my six guns, I reach into my jacket where uh, my shotgun thong is hanging and I pull out my Winchester shotgun. I'm going to fire once and then I'm going to run. <laughs> All right. Got a boy. So yeah, I'm firing into the air, seeing if I can. Uh... Would this be short range? Uh, yeah, it would be. All right. Ooh, those eights have been treating you well tonight. Yeah. Ooh. All right. All right. So you fire the shotgun into into the sw into the ground. The swarm of these things. However, I'm not going to have you roll damage mm -hmm. as they they disappear. It, it, while you uh, you smash a couple out of the swarm, it is a negligible amount compared to the number of these things that are there, and they just kind of flow around and crawl over the, the their dead kin and keep coming. So yeah, uh, I just shout, ah, oh, hell, run! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just run back and click on the uh, and, and click on the stairs to get back up to the the, first, the top floor. Yep. All right, and uh, you head up, leaving Oops. Moro down here. Uh, and the Prairie Tick Swarm go has its go. Uh, first of all, Moro, you're... There. You're still in the area effect of, of this thing, so that's 2d4 for Ooh, damage. Uh, 8 damage, do. which should be enough to shake you, I believe. Uh, that is enough to shake. Um, and then uh, they uh, will attempt to crawl in your face yet again. This time, just a fight and roll. Six. Will that hit your parry? That's enough to defeat his parry. Yep. All right. 
uh, several of these things start swarming up all over your body, and uh, they're, they're tiny little hooks prying at your lips and at your nostrils, and you can feel them begin to climb in through your or from through the orifice, and you're like, and you can feel them crawling into your into your face, uh, and you begin to hear somebody down here screaming, and then you realize it's you. Um, uh, next round, uh, the prairie tick swarm gets pulls the high card. Ah. And having infected you, starts moving right. towards the ladder. So it comes up, swarming up out of the, the hole in the floor uh, uh, back upstairs. Uh, Mara, what would you like to do? Uh, first we'll roll to unshake. Looks good. Uh, uh, and then... For some okay, yeah. Uh, and then we will uh, head on up the stairs, I reckon. Um, okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. We'll we'll uh. We'll declare the the run and roll a pace die. Okay. Just so I can be sure I make it. Yep. Oh yeah. It's good for eleven. Six. Uh. <laughs> Get back up to the uh, uh, back to the cabin in the woods. There we go. All right, so Mar, you come running up past Clayton and, and just kind of <laughs> climb climbing over top of him. Now I still uh, like Clayton may see ticks up mm -hmm. up and in me. Like they're I haven't divested myself of of the these parasites, right? There's a bunch hanging off of you, but yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and we might as well bring everybody in on the fun at this point. Uh, next, uh, let's, let's get, uh, actually, no, I'll leave, I'll leave, they're in capacity, but let's put everyone else onto these, uh, now let's end this combat. Yeah. And add everyone plus, I forgot. hang on one second. Two much, or sorry, three much larger prairie ticks come up out of the well. Not swarms, but actual full grown prairie ticks. About the size of a, a baseball come climbing up out of the well in the back. It, is there any way at a minus two to sort of fight the fight off the ones that are on me, or am I? Is that just my STI uh, now? Well, that is something that you'll have to deal with out of combat. Um, oh, all right. Uh, got a you are clinic. now in. You've got you got prairie ticks uh, in your face. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we'll have to figure out how to, and you'll have to figure out how to deal with that. Um, all right, so uh, let's begin combat here. Uh, pulling cards. Morrow, you have the high card. With the, uh, uh, the Morrow will go. Yeah, Morrow is on hold. Okay. Haddock, uh, you see three prairie ticks come crawling out of the well. These big, red, bloated, uh, arachnid-like things um, with these hooked uh, claws. They look nasty as all hell. Oh, hell no. In fact, actually, Amy and uh, uh, and um, Freeman, you both see these things. You have to make a fear check. Okay. Spirit uh, minus one. Spirit. Spirit minus one for both of you. There we go. All right, that's a nine for Amy. That's good. 
two for. Uh... I'm spending that Benny. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. Seven. That is a success. All right, and these things come. Um, uh, they come crawling out of the well. Amy, you still have your action. What are you gonna do? All right, I'll. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna pull up my uh, sawed off that hangs around uh, my waist and uh, just curse at these abominations and fire away. Uh, I just shot because are those spreaders? It's I think it's single, right? Single target generally. For what? For, the For shotguns? Shotgun? No, no, they're just single target. Okay. Uh, so just you point at one thing. Yeah, the one that's kind of closest. All right. Let's roll that sucker. Hit it. Oh, almost. Another one. That's a hit. Roll damage. Okay. Oh yeah, that that completely um that completely um, turns that one into a blood spot on, on, in the grass there. And I will back into the shed uh, just... Yeah, I'll back into the shed and just... Uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. Okay. I'm sure I've said a thing or two. Prairie Tick Swarm goes again at, at the top of the stairs. It's still engulfing uh, Clayton. It's going to deal damage to him. Uh, I, I rolled a four? Yeah, uh, three and a one. All right, four damage is not enough to shake uh, Clayton, I'm pretty sure, but it will attempt to now make a fighting roll against him. Let's see if I can... Uh... Tough to uh, target him here. There we go. All right. No, I'm not trying to target this. Too many ticks. He's covered. <laughs> he is covered. Yeah. I, I just targeted the ticks. I'm trying to target Clayton. No. Come on. Here we Too go. many ticks on the dance floor. <laughs> Too many ticks. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Uh, let's, I'm going to move the, them off of you, you for a second so I can actually make this. There we go, attack. There we go. Yeah, all right, you're, you're safe. They get, uh, they rolled a zero all day? I don't understand that exactly. But um, a two, uh, so yeah, they miss. I cannot right-click to target uh, as a GM. I don't have that ability. It's uh, it's a, a thing. Uh, Freeman, you're up. Okay. I can right-click to target, though. Yes, you can double right-click to target. GMs can't. We got to use. I think I might have to turn T to target back on. I turned it off uh, in my in my attempt to lighten the the module load in the you know, in the pack. Okay. For some reason, it will not let me select this uh, this prairie tick. Which one? The top one. The top one? And you double right click, yeah. nothing happened then? No. Okay. Is so, it checking for line of sight? No, that, that was that, me. That, should... that was me. Uh, all right, well, just uh, make your shoot and roll. Okay. Or whatever it is you're trying to do. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. Okay. I'm super freaked out. <laughs> Am I at any negatives or anything? No. Cool. Nice. That's a hit with a raise. Roll damage. So that, and that, that one's turned into a bright red paste as well. Uh, just going to... Uh... So it gave me a minus six on scale modifier when I targeted the tick. Oh, Cheyenne. that! Oh, that's the the uh, that's size. Uh, that small, is small, probably. 
It is tiny, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, oh, it's I see. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, that actually would have missed. Um, gems nine would not have. We have hit. a plus one. Been, if you do, we have a plus one. I don't see. Yeah, a plus we got one some. We got some back. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, we'll we'll uh, I we will assume that you did enough in that and call that a good kill. Um, okay. It would only have been a hit instead of a hit with a raise, but. I still have a third tick. Uh, Moses um, starts uh, looking at you, Clayton. This is like, dear God in heaven, what is this? Just shoot him. He's like, I'm sorry, boy. You want me to put you out of your misery? Um, he says. No, uh, in all seriousness, Moses looks at him and goes, looks at him and goes, Chewing ain't gonna do nothing to these things. And, he, and uh, uh, charges over to the, uh, to the, to the, to the template there and starts stomping them with his feet. Okay. Um, and, uh, what he can do with that is, uh, Inflict his damage and strength each round. Or his strength and damage each round. So, uh, his, uh, that's not hit. That's not Moses. Come on, Moses. There we go. So he says, starts stomping on, the, on these things. Six damage, which is not enough to shake the swarm. But he tried. Uh, Reno uh, whimpers and starts crawling away because he's still technically alive. Clayton, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna stomp myself. Uh, just stomp the swarm. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said that was... Just roll my your strength. strength and damage. Okay. Yep. Got Just it, roll got your it. strength and da and um, that's how much damage you're dealing. Okay. Uh, do I just roll it as an attribute roll? Yep. Alrighty. Four is not a uh, four. Okay. You just start. You're crushing ticks, but these things are really tough. You can you can you you you, you slam your boot down real hard, and you can feel them kind of like. You, you know you crush when you even hear a little snapping sound as you as you push your boot, the boot down and then you lift it up and you see it crawl away all right uh after that can i still run yes you may all right i'm going six feet out the door putting as much <laughs> space between myself and them as i possibly can the door is over here <laughs> yep i want to see you dive through the window so i guess that would <laughs> That would look more right. like you dived out the window, which I'm totally fine with. I'm not going <laughs> to... Oh, yeah. You know what? It, Wild West, I'll dive through the window. <laughs> okay. All right. There's there's not much of a window left there anyway. Um, so, yeah. All is good. All right. Uh, George Purdy uh, yeah. crawls out, starts crawling this way. Reno kind of started crawling this way. Uh, Bushwhack Bill like what's going on and he's handcuffed and he can't see what's going on down there prairie ticks uh i got oh, that's, that one's out and there's only one left it turns towards the the uh the door of the of the um of the shed and it moves its pace of eight Right at Amy Haddock. Son of Close. a bitch. <laughs> Look at it, Amy! See, the thing uh, moves way faster than you thought it should. It just, it's its eight legs just turning into a whirlwind through the grass and, and leaping and, and, um, and uh, scrabbling and its bit large hooked claws aimed right for your face as it does so. Given Jem's uh, last two uh, crit failures on notice, I'm not surprised that he has called this out while it is, you know, attacking me. So mm -hmm. that's very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, look. 
Alright, so, uh, and as it does so, it makes its fighting attack against your parry. Now, uh... It's not good. Oh, I'll take yeah. it. Oh, no! Yeah. Never mind. It get well, hey. It's got a plus uh, it, four? It, it, it does, because size difference. Uh, however, it needs a raise to actually, unlike the swarm, which just needs a success, these bigger ones need a raise to actually pry your jaw open and force their way in. Um, and while it got a hit on you, it did not get a raise. So it is just hanging off of your face at the moment, but not, uh, it is not uh, with its hooks digging into your flesh. And uh, next round, it's Clayton. Uh, if Bob could pop back in. Two jokers. Oh, oh, oh two jokers will get pulled. Yeah, Bob, what do you want to do with your held action before the next round? Um, just advise the sheriff. Uh, get get gone, sheriff. Uh, we'll burn him out. Uh, and uh, points towards the door. Okay. And then... Uh, also tries to get further from the swarm than uh, uh, poor Reno is. Uh, I forgot. Uh, Thomas Fry is up here. He's kind of collapsed in a pool of his own blood. And you see his... He's, he's just like... Ur, ur, and you see like his chest starts throbbing. Uh, and you can hear the flesh in his ribcage beginning to rip and tear. Oh, goodness. Okay, so that's Thomas Fry in between the sheriff and, and Bob. Yeah. Oh, dear. All right, so uh, so that that was that was last round. Uh, uh, what, it, were you, it, what were you doing last round? You other than, were what, you doing anything other than advising Moses uh, to run? Uh, advising Moses to run, but if I can hear Thomas shifting and shaking, then maybe yeah. it's time to put a carbine round into him or try to, try to do so. Well, it does not appear to be a thing that, I mean, you can certainly put him out of his misery if that's what you're, if you're, that's what you're looking to do. Right, yeah. Just okay. end it so that he isn't feeling whatever is about to come. Sure. All right. I'm not going to okay. have you make a roll for that. You, you just do it. Uh, and then, top of the new round, two jokers get pulled. Uh, Clayton, what would you like to do on that? Um, Let's see. So I'm. I don't know where my friend. I don't know where the rest of my friends are. So I'm gonna. Let's see. I'm gonna move. Actually, I'm gonna make a. Uh, I'm gonna make a running check. So okay. we're looking at a d6. Okay. One second. There we go. Okay. So that's a full 12 feet. And I will run towards the shed. You gotta run around these buildings here, not these straight lines. Yep. So we'll go. Control will let you uh, make, uh, holding down control while you're, while you're measuring yourself out will let you mm -hmm. make um, little uh, turning points or little checkpoints. Do you move through? Okay. Oh. And then holding down the control and then collecting clicking other. Yeah, there you go. Gotcha. So that was six. And change. So there we go. And Clayton will just be yelling, We need to go! We need to get out of here. Uh all right. <laughs> um Amy and um Jim, you can yell, scream something from back there if you like. Hang tight. We got something in here going on. <laughs> All right. Uh, Morrow, Black Joker. Bob will once, ago, once again go on hold, waiting for uh, Moses to hopefully step on out that front door. Uh, okay. And then Haddock. You got a prairie tick on your face, Haddock. Yeah, uh, and uh, scrawny Amy 
You know, I ain't gonna do too well prying that thing off, but what else is he to do? Um, if I can, I want to reach for my knife, pull that up, and try and cut yeah. cut it away from me. Yeah, sure. Give me a fight so, roll. Okay. Or, 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 use your, or click on your knife so you can make an attack with it. Um, should I target the tick? Yeah, you should, you should target yeah. the tick if okay. you can. All right. Terry Untrained, every, ladies and gentlemen. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, there oh. she goes. Cool. Plus bad. one. Uh, Do we have a plus one? Uh, yep. Th- uh, well, uh, this is not, you need more than a plus one because you their parry is a five. Oh, you're right, you're right. Um, Man, I, I can't Benny that with two raises, so. Uh, Throw it yeah, down. And- all right. And, and their scale is, this, you know, is uh, because of their scale difference, you're you're getting a minus six on these rolls. Right. Uh, so what they was are... the minus two? Oh, never mind. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll give it another go. I'll use the hunting ground. Okay. Yep. Thing ain't going anywhere. Okay. Uh, Prairie Tick gets his, his, another try here to pry your mouth open and get in. It makes its uh, fighting roll against you. Ten this time. Uh, which is a raise. And suddenly, uh, to your horror and amazement, Gem, the Prairie Tick is gone as it crawls into Amy's throat. I mean, you, you can see it. You can see his neck kind of bulge as it starts forcing its way down. Am I just powerless to stop this? Uh, I don't know. What do you? What could you possibly do? I'm, I might be miming for her to take me out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I don't think it's my turn, but I'd like to punch him in the throat where the uh, where the tick is. <laughs> Honestly, uh, well, uh, your turn is coming. So, uh, yeah. Reno, uh, Reno, uh, clears the, uh, kind of crawls out of the, of the doorway. Moses, uh, looks back at you, Bob Morrow and says, uh, I think you may be correct. And, and heads out the, heads out the door himself. Uh, um, all right. Uh, if Bob can drop in at that point, yep, he'll certainly. try, but whenever works well. Yeah, no, go right ahead. Um, Okay. Um, I don't know that I have axe. Well, I think Bob pulls out, uh, p- puts away that carbine and pulls out a deck of cards. Okay. And I don't know if uh, his vision starts to go dark and um, zooms in on a point right in front of him. But um, I would care to make a deal with the devil. Oh. All right. Hang on one second. I, and I, uh, and uh, I mean, there's going to be a, a little bit of move uh, as well. But uh, if I may, I don't know what um, the templates look like, but I'd like to see if I can target both the body of Thomas Fry and the um, the Prairie Tick Swarm with uh, a burst okay so or rather sorry a blast uh, which no it would be a burst yeah it's a burst well first of all let's uh deal with uh the the uh with the uh the deal with the devil first all right in order to contact the manitous i do need to drop a benny yeah so you pull out the deck of Uh, cards uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, you pull out the deck of cards and you go and you and you and you, uh, and you close your eyes and you think about and, and you and you ask for the assistance for the for the ability to do what you need to do. And it's like everything around you kind of goes dim at the edges, and you can hear a voice kind of over your shoulder say, "Well." 
Mr. Walsh. Didn't think I'd see you back at my table. Didn't but expect you... to be back so soon, but I got a head full of ticks and a cabin crawling with more. Yeah, sounds pretty desperate back there. Well, well, what can I do to aid you today? Don't know how close you was watching, but I put about 30 rounds into them things and didn't even phase them. Maybe, right. uh, maybe you've got something that might uh, be a little more effective against them than these boots. What are you looking to for me to put on the table? I reckon a burst. Add on some damage. <laughs> Can we be a little bit more flavorful here? <laughs> Very well. Um, uh, when I faced off against the bison, uh, I belched uh, I belched Aurora Borealis from from that Gatling gun. I reckon uh, those cleansing flames from high in the sky would be mighty useful in this case. Don't mind if that cabin burns to the ground as well. All right. Always do like a good campfire. Let's see Keeps how well us you warm. do. He shuffles the deck and begins to deal cards. Give me a. Uh, all right. So on your character sheet, I put a little link to a macro called Dealing with the Devil. Yes, Marshall. Uh, that's going to cost me at least a Benny. Right. It if not my soul. That, it'll do that when you play that. When you, when you press that button, it'll pay the Benny, I believe. There it goes. There it and... is. All right, so now we are rolling the D6 gambling. Yeah. Wish it were better. Yeah, oh. that's a four all day. But you got plus uh, two because of the Joker. Because of that Joker, that's that's all right. So that's, uh, that means I'm going to burn... Uh, let's burn a, a party Benny because I'm 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 looking for a raise on this. Okay. Um, Can we trigger those or uh, is it? Just uh, I tell you, I'm gonna give you another. I'm putting one back in there, and you can let you pull again. All right. Uh, and should it redeal the cards or uh, just reroll the d6? I think it's going to re. Uh, it's it's going to redeal the. No card. worries. Okay. Yep. Just wanted to make sure we're cool with that. Yeah. All right. Still. Oh, five, still no raise. raise. All right, but I like that ace king. So. Uh, choose, and the pair. Five cards. So. And you, so you pull off a pair, and then get three power points to add to your uh, to your power point total, which is currently ten. This can, this does, yes, this does let you go over your normal power point total, and you hold All on right. to those. Uh -huh. And it gives you uh, any one power um, that you're you're aiming for a uh, you're just aiming for a novice level power, so no penalty, right? Correct. Yep. Uh, so I'll grab a burst. I'll add the damage modifier to it. Okay. Um, and I will take... Uh, you know what? I'm going to take all three of those um, modifiers to use towards the casting roll, just to make it potentially more successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if I can get Thomas and the Swarm. Oh, I definitely can from there. Lovely. Mm -hmm. That is fabulous. All right. Thomas, the swarm, and the cabin. The corner of the cabin. Corner of the cabin. Right. Okay. So uh, I think uh, Walsh holds out the the Gatling pistol, which is uh, ostensibly empty of ammunition. Um, but uh, we see uh, these ribbony curtains of uh, Aurora Borealis, like the northern lights that seem to 
uh, spell forth from from the from the tip of that pistol and look like um, uh, blue and green and red curtains uh, uh, shimmering uh, across the across the cabin. All right. Well. So I think this roll is at a plus five. I've got plus two for the Joker, plus three for uh, the bonus points, yeah, and the, then the, it's the, going the, to those are just No, that's not plus three to your roll. That's just you had three power I think, points. Or does it give you? Or a can I? I think I can choose to use them for, as a modifier towards the spellcasting oh, yeah. role if I don't want to take the power points. Yeah, yeah. Is okay. You got to use uh, the power points for the power, though, first. If, oh, if you're you have, right. I can't use my own extra, powers. Thank then you God. Can use them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So actually, then I'm going to be making this roll at a minus one because I don't have enough. Um, I don't have enough power points to fuel it. So it actually becomes a, a deficit. Cool. I've only got three, and I'm trying to cast a four power point spell because I'm well, adding on damage. You have your own power points. You have your own power. Points. I don't think I can use my power points when I'm using a power for deal with oh, the devil. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm yep. sorry. All right. Yeah. So then. No. Nope, no. Nope. Yeah. Minus one. So, so plus. Minus one. Plus one all day. So I'm plus two from the Joker. Minus one. Okay. Uh, and so I don't think it's adding the Joker one. So I should add a plus one. Yeah. To the roll. Okay. Uh, five is that'll enough. That'll just barely make it. Okay. So, uh, burst is normally three d six, and you're but you're doing four d six because you added the extra damage. Is that correct? Uh, I think it's. Uh, I'll just grab the rules there. It looks like it's normally. Yeah, two d six damage, three d six with a raise, but oh, because oh, sorry, yeah. uh, I added. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, three d just three d six for damage. Three d six. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, if you just want to do this really easy, click the um, uh, on the bottom of the little dice tray down there, the very bottom thing. You click got it. Yes, and three d six. Or it doesn't really matter. You didn't. No aces, aces, unfortunately. So, yeah. You can you can Benny that and re-roll. I believe I will use a party Benny. Okay. With thanks to Dice Barbarian for providing all those subscriptions tonight. Yeah. Uh, acing on 3d6. Oh, I saw another still 6. Still a better Should damage. Come up. Still, still 11. Yep. All, right. all right. So We'll uh, leave it that there. That is enough to burn um, poor... Uh, um, the the body of uh, of uh, Thomas there and uh, set flames to the uh, to the tick swarm. Uh, you still have some movement. What would you like to do? Exactly. I would like to move as far away from the tick swarm as I can. <laughs> so okay. one. Well, Which yeah. Way? Well, we're gonna move towards the north. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Five, six, catching up to to uh, Bill up there. Okay. Uh, the tick swarm kind of goes up in flames. Um, uh, you can hear a sort of sizzling, crackling sound, and the uh, the basically the the swarm is split now into two smaller swarms. As the one, as the ones that survive the flames, scurry away um, from the from the from the central mass, and they create two smaller uh, concoctions. Uh... Good news, everyone! <laughs> I've <laughs> but, doubled uh, their numbers. <laughs> but now I, they, they, I, they start they start this uh, this car uh, this round shaken as well. So I'm gonna roll for them to see if they unshake. One one unshakes and chases after you. This way it was back here. So uh, let's see. Boom. Actually, uh, it instead it just engulfs George Purdy on its way. Uh, there. Why would it go running after you? One, you're already infected, and two, there's other meat in the process that it can that it can pounce on. 
So that's what it does. You hear George Purdy begin to scream as the ticks swarm over him. Um, and uh, then Moses kind of backs out onto the. Um, no, 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 no. Moses went and then you took your action. Freeman, you're up. So do I still see the tick lodged in Amy's throat? Well, you see the throat. You don't see the tick. You see the bulge. Yeah. I want to try it. Can I punch that? Yes. Well, sure. <laughs> All right. Do I need to, like, target Amy, or can I just, like, go? Yeah, you kind of need to target Amy for that. Okay. Sorry, Amy. And uh, I'm going to have to give you a, uh, a penalty because it's a cold shot. So. Okay. Just get that look in my eyes like wait what are you doing what <laughs> what are you doing although i don't know it's so like if, this thing down my throat is there another way i can uh target him can i do like control t or something uh uh, uh it, it, when you double right click what happened were you not able to target him mm -mm. all right well just roll your fight and, and uh we'll just okay. look at his we'll just look at his uh toughness because you're not you know you're not trying so to I'm hurt rolling. him, but you're trying to hurt the thing in him. So. Right. Um, I'm trying to punch him. And you said I'm at negative two? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a seven uh, versus his toughness of five. That's a hit. You deal okay. damage. Uh, I don't want to hurt him, but I do need to get this thing out of my friend, so. Yeah. Seven. Uh, that is enough to shake um, uh, uh, Haddock. Um, you're not sure how much of that is transferred to the, the thing inside him, though, unfortunately. Um, George Purdy gets start, uh, dies screaming as ticks swarm all over him. Uh, Bushwag Bill backs away in horror into the into the woods, uh, and uh, we come to the end of the round, and we may have to say the end of the night here. And I believe it's getting late. Or did you want to do another round? Nobody said yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely ready I don't have to keep to go, going. But I'm Especially yeah. I don't have to go. But if anybody else does, I'm. <laughs> All right, so um, tell you what, um, Moro, actually anybody with an occult can make an occult roll at this moment. All right. Mm, there Good we go. rolls. Um, all right, Jim and Moro, you both succeeded on that roll. Uh, Jim, you know what a prairie tick is. You've heard these words used before. Um, you know that uh, uh, you know that they'll crawl inside a person and start draining them of blood. But death isn't like quick. It can take hours, uh, sometimes days, depending on how strong the person is. Um, however, without a raise, you're not really sure what you're supposed to do to, uh, get them out of a person, short of surgery. I'm going to, I'm going to spend a Benny so that I can learn more if that's all right. But Moro, before you do that, Moro got a really good role. He knows how to deal okay. with these things. Moro, uh, you, don't know you know everything. I'm my throat though. Huh? <laughs> you don't know I have one down my throat yet. Yeah, M Moro's got some a whole bunch of baby ones on him in him too, and you know, again the same things that um, these things will crawl into you, they'll drain you of blood, and um, you'll you, death won't come quick. It'll take hours or days, and that the best cure that your superiors have advised you, should you encounter these things is castor oil. 
that if, if you can get right. castor oil down the gullet of a person who's been infected, the tick will the ticks will come out. I appreciate you giving it to me straight, Doc Arcane. <laughs> That's some good bedside manner. All right, uh... and so, and with that, I think it's probably a good point stopping point for the night. I think okay. we're going to wrap it up here. Pick it up with uh, uh, the as you guys flee the building. Narratively, I'm going to take over this scene. Yeah, everyone, everyone who gets out of the building as the cabin quickly goes up in flames. Um, you stagger back. Uh, things uh, uh, looking at the, the the place backlit, and it may, becomes clear as those of you who have are affected um, begin telling each other how bad things are about to get and you realize that you guys need to get back down from the mountains back to Missoula um, before these things kill Moro and uh, and Amy and with that we're going to turn to everyone out there in the audience and say thank you so very much for coming and watching our show I've been Marshall Cheyenne Wright uh, you can read uh, uh, the webcomic that I do. New, the new pages go up every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at girlgeniusonline.com. Uh, been published for uh, 20 years and won three Hugo Awards. And you can read it all online for free. Uh, we're going to go around the, 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 the clock face here again, but I'm going to start with Clayton this time. Clayton, uh, pitch your woo to the uh, fine audience and tell them where they can find you. Absolutely. So once again, it is at Howard underscore Ryan Gregg on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Roland Bones with Ryan Howard is here on Twitch every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central. We'll be taking a break next week, but the week after that, we'll be back with some more content. And I'm actually bringing Todd here on the show in a couple weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that. Those of you who love this, you'll get to see both of us on uh, my Twitch channel, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time. All right, Jam Jameson, Jim Freeman. Hey, everybody. Um, you guys can find me at uh, That Candace Girl on Discord and Twitter. You can also find me at Candace the Magnificent, all one word, on Instagram and YouTube. Um, I don't really have anything going on except for this right now, but um, expect some ice cream uh, review videos in the coming weeks. <laughs> Are they going to be prairie tick flavored? Uh, Bob Morrow. <laughs> hello, hello, <laughs> chat. Soon. I have been Bizarre Hands. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and uh, Instagram under those same names, especially if you want to see photos of my adorable dog. I've joined you today from Treaty 4 territory, the original lands of the Cree, Soto, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, as well as the homelands of the Métis. And lastly, Amadeus, Amy Haddock. Hello all, Todd Moonbounce Tick again. Tick Wrestler, yes. Uh, Todd Moonbounce <laughs> on Twitter and on Twitch. And I am also uh, one half of the Dungeon Jedi Masters, a podcast and much more for the Star Wars 5e fan conversion, uh, which I will be talking about with Ryan, as he mentioned in a couple weeks. Looking forward to that. So uh, having a blast here tonight. Cheyenne, thank you. And to everyone out there, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. All right. And I'm just saying... Prairie Garcia. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we go, I want to do one more thing. Back in Missoula right about now, it's dark. Morgan Bennett is closing up the wagon shop. Shadowy figure appears in the doorway. Wearing a a flower sack over his head. And he calls out. He says, Bennett, your time has come. And a rope drops from his hands. And that's the show for tonight, folks. Tune in next week. <laughs>